Welcome, everybody, to the one and only Shoot Brothers podcast. We are the Shoot Brothers. I am Mike the Shoot Shepherd, joined as always by Cameron, Brother Osborne. Cameron, Brother Osborne, right here, right with you. Yes, we got a whole pile, a plate, a bowl full of shoot to get to today. <laughs> you little shoot, uh, a little shoot bowl. Yeah, there's a lot. The world of wrestling is going wild. This is it's not slowing down anytime soon. We've got NXT on television, AEW coming out soon, pay per view next week, debuts on Fox, switching days over. So much crazy shit going on here. We also have uh, a season premiere of Raw, which I didn't know was even a thing. Well, that's the great thing. So the have season you, you finale about happens, and you don't even have to wait. The season finale happens the next week. You get to find out. When has there been a season finale of Raw? Well, that, was, uh, that was this week. <laughs> just such a weird right? thing to say. It's coming back next I, week. Yeah. It's like you know, there's <laughs> it's never all just hype. There's never a season uh, finale of like Wheel of Fortune because it's just going to be on again tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty much, um, <laughs> but yeah, we're. Uh, we're here. We're here, We're here as we always are. We got a great show. We got a great show coming up, Raw Smack. The season finale of Raw. You know, the season, season finale, finale of SmackDown. Whatever these whatever that means. We got it. Yeah. We got it coming Indeed. at us. We got some tweets. We got some trivia, as we always do. But uh let's kick off the show by um taking a little news around the ring. Around the Where, where are we headed? Let's first let's first head to NXT land, where uh, last week NXT held their first live-to-air uh, weekly show on the USA Network. I guess I guess SmackDown's being moved uh, to Fox, but kind of the USA contract is still there, I guess, for whatever. Because I think, I think Monday Night Raw is also USA Network. Yeah, Raw's on USA, and I think they just want more wrestling content. And I think, it has, right. I think it has been for years. I think, like, the entire time. It's been USA Network, with a little bit of Spike TV thrown in there in the middle. Yeah, they've been with they've been in bed with USA for a long time now. <laughs> they've they've been in bed all right, <laughs> but of course, the very first um, NXT live show, um, live weekly show, uh, we were being told the match was coming up. It was uh, Roddy Strong was getting another shot at Velveteen Dreams North American Championships. Uh, we've been will the undisputed era be dripping in gold? Yeah, they've come close. They've teased it, but uh, and uh, and we both watched it. We both caught the match. Uh, Matt, Mike, what do you want to say about it? Yeah, no, it was a good match. The crowd was loving it. Uh, yeah, eventually, undisputed era comes out, and the ref gets knocked out. So they have all that crap going on. Um, and then Roddy hits the finisher. Dream kicks out, but then he ends up getting him again with some uh, after some bullshit distractions. But bullshit. This was. It was, this was the time. This was the time. Dream had a great reign. Roddy Strong, he hit the end of Heartache to win his first ever North American Championship. To win his first ever North American Championship. I guess maybe also his first WWE Championship. I don't know if he has the uh, one of those tag belts attributed to uh, his name. I think name. he's got one of the tag. But either way, first singles title. Uh, yeah, no, this was good. The, they finally fulfilled the prophecy. And Velveteen Dream had a great run. He's probably been the best North American champion up to date. But yeah. Now let's see what Roddy can do. Yeah, let's see what Roddy can do. And it seems like uh, it, 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 the, the thought has always been, you know, or at least in the past few years, you know, you get that North American belt and then you lose it. Then you move on to the, the main title picture before moving on to the main brand. But now that NXT seems to be its own brand to kind of stay, like... Uh, Right now, we have the undisputed era are all full of gold, full of belts. Yeah. But what about um, what what what's next for Velveteen Dream? My, my yeah, no, wrestler think, uh, of the year from last year's shooties, <laughs> if we can recall, if we can yeah. recall, my favorite wrestler of the year. Um, where do you want to see him go? What's next for him? Yeah, no, I think he'll stick around on NXT for now and uh, eventually chase down that main NXT championship. Yeah, but, uh, it's it seems like NXT maybe they're giving the show the freedom to be a place where hey maybe it, it, it's not a matter of moving up to the main roster. They've been telling this in these in the NXT promos. They've been telling us this whole time too, right? Like this is the fucking show. There is nowhere else to go. When Johnny Gargano yeah. came back a couple weeks ago, he was like, "This uh, is because I'm fucking here." Yeah, he's like, "I don't want to go anywhere. This is, <laughs> NXT's my home." 
NXT is so. he's a, a way lighter travel schedule. <laughs> yeah, easier on your too. body, and, of uh, course. Um, uh, yeah. So we got to get we got to give one over to the undisputed era. You know what? God damn it! I wish uh, I wish we saw it happen. Yeah, it's kind of uh, so they've had these two title changes just on weekly television instead of the pay per view that was a month ago or whatever. God, but. yeah, God damn it, eh? <laughs> God damn, which we yeah. saw the exact same people going at it. It's we like, saw fuck. all the same matches, God. yeah. But, all the uh, exact they wanted to wait same two weeks. matches. <laughs> God, but uh, God damn it, yeah. But we did, uh, we did have some fun. Um, we also had some fun, yeah. So there's NXT first show. Um, I didn't watch the show last night, Mike. We're gonna we're gonna have to figure out how we incorporate Wednesday night's action into our show. Yeah. Well, well, we'll we'll do better next time. But now that we're we're already deep in it. Let's just keep going. Uh, so there was a fatal four-way match on that first show as well with the women, uh, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, Bianca Belair, and Mia Yim to determine the number one contender. And then, uh, yeah, Candice LeRae won that match. So she'll she'll face, Candice LeRae will face Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. Next yeah. Next week on NXT, going head-to-head with the AEW women's title match. Too, Why do all these match. women need to go up against each other? Can't all these women work together? <laughs> you know? Well, they, they, there's a title. They have to fight for the title. There's a title. There's a title on the line. Uh, so There was also... What were you, what were you, you going to say there, Mike? Well, if you have something to add to the woman, to go ahead. I was just moving on to something else. Oh, not really. I was just probably going to say something silly. <laughs> Let's move on uh, to something yeah. serious. No, uh, Leo Rush made his su- somewhat surprising return, I guess. He showed up and... Uh, he won the number one contendership for the Cruiserweight Championship by beating One Lorcan on television. So. We kind of thought Leo Rush was done. A lot of his uh, yeah, a lot of his was... attitude online was leaning towards him, you know, kind of leaving the company or at least waiting for his contract to be out and then being released. Uh, NXT could be where he belongs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. Either way, he's getting a title shot for the Cruiserweight at some point. We'll see. Hopefully on NXT. Cause now the Hopefully cruise, the cause now two hundred five live is done. Um, well, I don't know. Okay, There's still it's still something, but yeah, I don't know. I think they should just right. absorb but, into but, NXT. But but so but SmackDown show on Fox is a is is a two hour show also. Yeah, like I think they're still gonna tape a two hundred five live on Friday or whatever for now at least, but we'll see. Okay, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that all kind of plays out, or if that's just a division now that sticks around NXT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think NXT is a good fit for it. Yeah, it's you like kind of have that. Yeah, this that one extra title for like so at a upcoming pay per view like War Games, there's another match you can throw on the card, cruiserweight championship or something. So War Games is the next scheduled a um, NXT pay per view. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so, that, so that'll November. be coming up in November. Uh, yeah. Great. Oh, my God. I'm so looking forward to that War Games. Every single War Games match that we see. Oh, yeah. They've the all two, been good. The two that we've had have been <laughs> so much fucking fun. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll never forget. It's when Kyle O'Reilly goes to hit someone with a chair, misses the person, hits, like, the ropes, and then it bounces off the ropes and hits him in the face. <laughs> I'll never forget seeing that and how hard I fucking laughed when he pulled that off. I thought it was yeah. one of the best moves in NXT. NXT is just on the way up, right? It was what we've been saying. Uh, it's, what, it's what everyone's been saying this whole time. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're consistent. They're always good. The takeovers are always a lot of fun. And now it seems like the weekly show is becoming a bigger deal. So, so that'll be that great. Was- that'll be great. We're going to keep moving around the ring, though. Uh, yeah. Earlier on in the week, which I am dubbing... This 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 takes this takes the this takes Dean this takes the Dean Ambrose work shoot meter to a whole nother level. I'm <laughs> on I'm in Montreal over the weekend. I open Twitter to see the the fucking top trending thing on Twitter reading WWE star Lacey Evans pulled <laughs> over for traffic stop and I'm like, "Oh, okay shit, what's going on here?" Mike, you've saw the video. Folks at home, you probably oh, all see course. the video where <laughs> Lacey Evans 1000% in character is talking back <laughs> to this Edmonton cop, just giving it to him. She so so I guess she was she was speeding. He gives her a ticket and he's saying like she's saying like, "What's this ticket for? You Canadians are a bunch of nasties. Do you know who I am?" And this cop's yeah. just like, "No, I don't know who you are." He's like, "I'm Lacey Evans." And he's he's like, 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was and great. She just snatches the ticket out of his hand. You just snatches nasty. it. You nasty. This was He's like, well, have a good day. Have a good day from Edmonton. <laughs> yeah, have a good day from Edmonton, <laughs> Mike. This was fan fucking tastic. There, like the immediate reports. I loved the fucking outcry. The people pouring in, like people who are verified on Twitter. You people know, got uh, their asses worked. Reporters, whatever it was, saying cops yeah. deal with this on a on a daily basis. Who is this woman? Why is she? Blah blah blah. <laughs> the police officers i have people my 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 phone is blowing up now not only people saying hey did you see this but they people, want the scoop people saying like yo who is this bitch and why is she saying this and now next thing you know i'm explaining kayfabe to people i'm explaining yeah. works and shoots oh my god she's we a, were all a- just worked yeah, she's a Canadian viral sensation this past week. It was amazing. It was amazing. Of course, I think I did later hear or I was told um, that the whole thing was a work. The cop was in on it. Yeah. They came out and said because some people were taking it too seriously. Because some people were taking like, oh, it way God. too seriously. <laughs> like, first, folks, and, and, I, and, I think, and I think it's just kind of like the person, who, the person who's not in on, in on the joke, it's for them, right? Because presumably yeah. this police officer would have, you know, said like, ID ID and driver's license Mm -hmm. and then he would have seen a name that's not Lacey Evans (laughs) a different name on this woman's you know registered identification and then she would have and so in a video she's calling herself Lacey Evans but it's she's clearly a different (laughs) person I'm pretty sure impersonating somebody else is may not be like a crime but they, they would probably question you about it you yeah. know, if she's like, I'm Lacey Evans. And like, well, your ID says you're like someone else. And she's like, but I'm Lacey <laughs> Evans. All I know is somewhere in like New Hampshire or Connecticut, Vince McMahon was just like writhing his, his little hands together, you know, just like, ha, 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 we got him. We got him. Uh, work of the century, Lacey Evans. I got to fucking, I got to put you over. We haven't put anything over in a long time. Uh, Mike, <laughs> well, this, this might be my chance to put Lacey Evans over. Uh, I love it. Yeah, no, I don't, you know, I have no problem putting her over. And I just have to let you know right now, this was my Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. Great segue, Mike. We got a Tweet of the Week. This exact same piece of content was this very video that Lacey Evans posted. Uh, What was the text? She had some text to go along with it. What did it, let me see it here. Uh. Number one, Canada is terrible. Number two, you know exactly who I am. Number three, you'll be speaking to my lawyer. You nasty. You nasties. Yeah. And she put some like fingernail painting emoji with the little little sun hat next to it. With a little sun hat next to it. Lacey Evans, you're our new Tweet of the Week champion. Um, yes. I, 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 I don't have the list in front of me, and I don't want to say our first ever female champion, but definitely I, I, there have not yeah. been many. I think Bailey might have been many. first. And, yeah, there's uh, definitely at least one. Lacey Evans might be, uh, might be way, number two. She deserved it. She's getting put over. She's winning Tweet of the Week. She's winning Work of the Week. Um. <laughs> work of the Week. That, that would be yeah. tough. There's a, there's right. no, I don't know if there's, that, enough, I don't know if there's that, enough. That one would be hard to distinguish. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you don't know a work's a work until a shoot's a shoot, brother. Brother. And, yeah. um, I love that. Oh, man. I love that. I love that. Uh, I love that yeah. little piece of news. She, uh, she is committed. She's the character. Right, and I, and that's as soon as I saw it happen, I just pictured her getting pulled over and telling the cop like, "Hey, can we film this funny little video?" Yeah, and like, oh, okay, oh sure. Maybe because he's a nice Canadian cop, he was just like, "Oh okay," yeah. like she was probably yeah. just going like thirty over the limit. You know, she I don't I don't picture Lacey Evans like driving. She's probably, oh, officer, you know, you know miles kilometers. <laughs> Exactly. I, exactly. I don't picture her committing <laughs> like like a, a crime. <laughs> I just I was looking at the wrong numbers on the dash. I'm sorry. For all we know, it was like yeah, a fucking routine traffic stop, or like a, the tail light of her rental car was out. Like for all we for all know, we know he saw her and recognized her and just wanted the opportunity to pull her over. Yeah, it was like um, you and know, when the, when, when the cops stop you just to check for drunk drivers. You know, yeah. a little ride along program. It could have been just that. And maybe the cop was like, oh, shit, you're Lacey Evans. Let's let's yeah. work the world right now, because that's <laughs> what you do. If you see Lacey Evans and you're at work, you're like, OK, how do we turn this into some fucking in, 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 into something? Yeah, you know, work he with might, she might have done nothing wrong and he only wanted to give her a ticket. Just that's so entirely possible. Get her autograph. It could have been her autograph. It, that John. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that Lacey John Hancock. Hancock. It could have yeah. just been the way that it's filmed. Maybe she's just in like a fucking parking lot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we just film it out the window so all so it looks like we're kind of like on the side of a highway. And this cop, maybe it wasn't even a police officer. Maybe could've it just was been some guy with one of those green vests, you know? Some guy just happened to be walking around with a like safety vest. Next thing yeah. you know, work of the century, work of the century. You know what, Lacey Evans, you you the century. You, you put the Mox man to shame right now. <laughs> well, okay, okay, but that might have been, been a personal. No, no, I'm with it. I'm on this ride. Let's go, Lacey Evans. I know. I don't think. I don't think I've pumped up Lacey Evans so much. I've been spending like six minutes just talking about how I'm, great I'm, this I'm, was. I'm, I'm loving. It. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Um, there's your around the ring news. Of course, there's your tweet of the week. Lacey Evans, brand new champion, uh, dethroning the Rand Man, uh, who, who, yeah. who we thought just couldn't be stopped. Oh, he'll be back. He'll, he'll always be back. <laughs> he'll be back vaping and touching his wife's tits some, uh, sometime soon. Uh, there, there, there's your uh, there's your opening, folks. I think it's about time we um, we jump uh, we jump to uh, south of the border because uh, Monday Night Raw is coming to us live um, from the new Chase Center, the new arena out there where the um, uh, where the Golden State Warriors will be playing. Oh, so that's what the that's oh, yeah, the whole new the thing. Last. So the Oracle, yeah, right, where they used to play, uh, which I either I, I believe the Oracle was in Oakland and the Chase Center is in San Francisco, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I gotta say, the final game ever played in the Oracle is the best NBA game in history. Uh, gotta be top ten. <laughs> gotta be top ten. I'll give you that. Of course, yeah. Though the ra- the Raptors like sent the or- like Oracle off. Like literally, yeah, no the, the other basketball shut down done. But no other basketball game was ever played there. Will ever be played there again? I'm pretty sure they're yeah. just like demolishing it. I really don't know. But uh, this, <laughs> but this week on Monday Night Raw, um, we're building up. Of course, we still have a couple more weeks until uh, until Hell in a Cell. So we need these things to come yeah. together. The show kicks off when Seth Rollins, our Universal Champion. Um, well, even right before that, there was the Fiend was fooling around again with the the opening graphic. Oh yeah, story. that was that was pretty cool. He's found himself <laughs> little... in the uh, in in the production team and fit Finley's ear somehow. Yes, uh, they've taken him under his wing. He after he retires, he wants to have a long career in video editing backstage with the WWE. So this is just a start. Is that is that real? <laughs> no. Is that a shoot? But are you working me? Shoot. Are you working that's me right now? That's everything. Ah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, Seth Rollins comes out just to talk yeah. to us um, about having to meet just the to fiend face to face last week. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. He calls him the living embodiment embodiment of a nightmare. Yeah, uh, scary. Yeah, and talks about the the cell match they got coming up in two weeks, and then he talks about how he beat Braun at Clash of the Champions, and he's going to do the same to Braun or Bray. And then uh, speaking of Braun, he comes strolling out here. He grabs a microphone. He's like, hey. You got something to say? Say it to my face. Or you're going to get these hands, which again, <laughs> yeah. I don't quite know. Don't quite know. But uh, but of course, well, you know, Seth, he, he believes Seth is to blame for the loss of those raw tag champs or raw tag yeah. belts. Um, but he lost the universal one fair and square. So that's true. But anyway, Seth doesn't like him getting in his face. So they decide they'll have a match later tonight. And uh, and, and I think we get that match. I think that might be our headliner. So uh you know, it's it's uh it's funny when you think oh, yeah, about that is the... it's funny when you think about um like the timing or uh, you you have to wonder the timing of their Monday night main events because it it because we're, we're in Monday night football time right I mean you sort of have all summer to not like Monday night Raw does not have to compete with anything uh, yeah. but competing with football has to be pretty tough and I guess having Braun and Seth in that main event. Uh, maybe we'll start to see like m- more star-studded main events just because we got to keep eyes on the product. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And uh, yeah, sometimes they plan around that. Like every once in a while, they'll, they'll put the big match in the first hour if there's a late football game or something to try to steal the viewers. But um, yeah, yeah, either way. Yeah, either way. Uh, next up, I think we go straight into uh, our first match of the night. Yeah, we have tag some... team match here. The Viking Raiders, the Viking Raiders taking on the OC. I guess Viking Raiders plus no, it's it's OC minus AJ. Yeah, so yes. it's just two on two here. Uh, the OC did come out to like a new entrance theme though, and some graphics. So yeah, it was good. I like. I thought I saw that. It was or it was like it was yeah. like the original the something. It wasn't, yeah, and like the theme because before they just had Gallows and Anderson theme. Now I guess they have like an OC, an original creation theme for the OC. Man, speaking and, of themes, this week. 
the uh, the Kabuki Warriors' theme was particularly oh. bad this week. Yeah, it's like yeah, they're not even. Uh, we'll get to that on Ryan. Um, I'm, just, I'm talking themes. That too. This is theme talk. Uh, no, I'm talking theme because Fire and Desire have the exact same thing too. Or oh, are they doing uh, that too? I see. I didn't know. Yeah, that they... like it starts off with like Sony's like, duh, 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 and then just transitions to. Ah, yeah, yeah. See, I didn't know. I guess I didn't know that they had their <laughs> own individual themes. I just thought because you were too it. busy focused on other things when they're coming down to the ring. You're too busy focused on other things when they're coming no! down. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the production, <laughs> Mike. I'm the one who noticed the music this week. Yeah, I, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you noticed anyway. something with without without your eyes. We'll we'll get to that. We'll get on to Smack, that. But, um, <laughs> Viking Raiders are here. Uh, so, yeah, this is finally, finally, after months and months, a real feud. Viking Raiders, OC. Uh, side note, the NFL this past week, the Vikings played the Raiders. Um, they should have had a cameo there. Should have had, they should have sent Ivar and them to the game, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> what? Well, the crowd, the Vikings versus the Raiders? I don't know. At, well, at the, uh, at the next week's game... Or sorry, wow. So what the fuck am I saying? On on SmackDown, they did have some some of the members of the San Francisco 49ers there, which I thought was pretty. Fun. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah. All right, on to the match. The Viking Raiders they're in control early on, and then of course AJ's out there trying to interfere, causing all these distractions. Uh, but the refs had enough of him, so he gives him the old umpire toss, throws him out. Uh, and then on his way back up the ramp, Cedric Alexander comes out and jumps AJ from behind, starts beating his ass, chasing him off. So uh, the Vikings get the big hot comeback in the ring, crowds into them. So I guess they're, uh, they were kind of in the middle now, but they're, they're baby faces now, I guess. So Baby faces, they, you know, the, o, the OC keeps taking losses. I guess, I guess the OC can keep taking losses as long as AJ Styles keeps getting yeah. wins. <laughs> it's like you yeah, can't as have long as both, but you can have one. Exactly. Of course, yeah. um, who are the Raw Tag Champs right now? Uh, Ziggler and Rude. Right, 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 but right, 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 right. Shouldn't last. Yeah, that, that one shouldn't last too long. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, ideally, these two teams could be fighting for it. So, but yeah, Viking Raiders get the win with the Viking experience. Pretty good match. Yes, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, <sighs> we moved on. To, yeah, we um, get the backstage. Well, there was a quick little, yeah, the sit down interview the, between Michael Cole and Becky Lynch talking about. Sasha and the Hell in a Cell and uh, Becky said that she's glad Sasha's back and she's on a little hot streak because she wants the best of the boss that she can get and uh, she said the cell is not to keep Bailey out but to keep Sasha trapped in like a little rat Ooh. so uh, her I, words not mine I like these sit down interviews and I think we, t- we spoke about it a bit last week better than the, the split screen thing yeah the fake I'm talking to a camera I'm not I'm talking to I don't yeah like you're talking uh, to a person giving you an interview and mm-hmm. it's not the weird mic being shoved in your face uh, it certainly feels more like a fighter would yeah you know yeah, it feels more authentic and more sport the, the more mm-hmm. sport of the uh, of the thing, which is great, I think. Uh, you know, and I mean, if yeah, if it, if it means it has to be Michael Cole, I mean, I guess that's okay. But you know, uh, yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's kind of the resident resident uh, been there for the longest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, I like these, and I mean, it makes sense because like, yeah, on real sports shows and stuff, they'll do the split screen interview, but that's only when they're not in the same room. Like, if you're in the same building, you might as well just sit down. Like, you're in the same fucking building every week. <laughs> just, like, do it. Like, you yeah. can pre-record. You can do it earlier that day. Just, like... Yeah, do it anytime you want. Like, make make it seem like a real interview. That's one thing that New Japan does very well. Their pre- and post-match interviews, um, if you've ever caught them, are very much they so... They always do them in the ring, right? Pardon? Don't they do them in the ring a lot? Like after the match, they just come in and start talking in the ring. No, no, no. I was thinking, um, like, uh, they, they, they'll, they'll set them up very much more. Like, uh, you, you know, like you're in the playoffs, and after your game, the player sits down at, at the table in front of all oh, the yeah. media. They play it more like that. So there's a table, you know, a little backdrop that'll say New Japan behind them. And they'll sit down yeah. at the table. There will be, you know, seven or eight microphones set up. All the people <laughs> taking photos. Like, it's set up more like it yeah. is sport than it is kind of this kind of thing that uh, they also created. You know, just, um, you know, kind of blurring those lines a little bit, which uh, I, I really like. I think it really works. And I think it'll work here in WWE also. Yeah. Uh Something I forgot to mention during the Around the Ring segment was uh, over the course of the weekend, EC3 
gained and lost the 24-7 championship a couple times to R-Truth. A couple times? But, oh, God. Yeah. He must have had so a, he must have had a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they even mentioned it on TV, but um, he was here. EC3 got in a match against Rusev, uh, but we know the deal here. Just a quick squash. Rusev gets the easy win, so tough. Uh, it's tough to see EC3 get wasted like this, but what are you going to do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I here? personally do? <laughs> Probably not much. Uh, you're right, though. EC3, and but it, and it's the struggle that we always say, like we say before, right? We have dudes going over on local jobbers, and we're like, that's no fun. Yeah. But then you have Rusev going over on EC3, and then you're like, well, that's no fun because of slightly different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> it's like it's no fun also, for a different reason. It's kind of, they just kind of, they brought Rusev back with Maria, and then they just kind of forgot all about that. Yes. Like, not, I don't think, not that he was supposed to be the father, it was just an excuse to bring him out. They're like, oh, here's Rusev. And yeah, Lana's nowhere to be seen. Because they brought up Maria's... Lana a couple times, and I'm like, mm. I don't even know what the fuck's going on there. Does she still work here? <laughs> I don't know. She seems so, that she seems like a more like a women's battle royale type of uh, performer at this point. Yeah, yeah. The, scene, the timing seems weird. Like the drafts in like two weeks. Why wouldn't you just save a surprise for the draft? Be like, oh yeah, Rusev. Oh. But, oh. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I mean, oh. I also I think last time we checked in with Rusev, he may have been on the SmackDown brand. So uh, it's all kind of arbitrary right now. Of course, yeah, this draft next week, which they are saying more like. The draft, no wild card. People have a show again. Yeah. So hard line. I think the Fox executives, the USA executives, they have a hand in it. So I, I think this is going to be a hard line. Hard line. I bet. You say. know, I mean, Paper Fox. Game. Like this is huge. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, Fox does sports. Like they don't yeah. do. You know, this is Fox Sports we're talking about here, right? This is. No, I've been like I was watching. Uh, like NFL games yesterday, they were advertising SmackDown. Like, oh, moving to Fox, Friday Night SmackDown. Exactly. Like, this is huge. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the USA Network, it w w just earlier we were chatting about NXT being split up. Half of it was on USA, half it was on the network. Reason being, they still have like three more episodes of Suits to go down. Yeah. And Suits is apparently the biggest fucking show ever or something. I've never seen it. But I've it's never like, seen it, but I've heard but of it. <laughs> but it's like, you know, so on, on the USA Network, uh, WWE is taking a back seat to their programming, but it seems as though on Fox, it's taking uh, v very much so, you know, the very f the front of their priorities, uh, which which will be great to see like a new spin on the show. Yeah, no, they're 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 booking this uh, the first Friday show is like a big, almost like a pay per view thing. They've booked more for that than they have for Hell in a Cell. It's, it's gonna be fucking huge. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be good. It'll be fucking huge. Uh, Anyways, moving right along here, we get some women's action. Sasha Banks versus Nikki Cross. The Boss versus the Cross. Uh, Sasha looking good in her blue and white here. Getting ready for the start of the hockey season, of course. Strongly <laughs> believes. Uh, yeah, that's what, exactly match. what Sasha Banks was thinking of. She's <laughs> like, I got to wear my Leafs gear tonight. Yes. We're live in uh, San Fran. I got to wear my Leafs <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, because she knows the Raptors won last year. Now it's the Leafs' turn. and Anyways, we got, good match here, Nikki. That's a good point. That's a Nikki good point. Cross. I mean, Mar Marner's locked up, so uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Cross was kind of working him more. This match, it was good. They gave him some time. She worked a bit more slow, methodical style that we don't see from her too often. I like the variety. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Nikki, the, she looks. She, there was one spot. She must be pretty flexible because Sasha, like, had this submission going on, and her Nikki's leg was all bent awkwardly. Her heel was, like, touching her chin almost. It was crazy. Uh, Sasha got busted open in the mouth at one point after a big cross body. And then finally, Nikki hits her swinging neck breaker. But before she can pin anyone, Bailey jumps in to distract the ref. So Bliss, and then Bliss comes, takes Bailey out. Nikki goes to the top rope, but then Sasha catches her, rolls her through into the bank statement, forcing Nikki to tap out. But I thought this was a good match. One of Nikki's best singles matches that she's had on the main roster. What I heard the other day was, uh, you can't miss with Bliss, but you're at a loss <laughs> without Cross. Yeah. Or you saw the shirt? Or something like that. They have a shirt. There's That's a the shirt. shirt. Yeah. We're buying That's in. You know shirt. what? And uh, Sasha Banks, did Sasha Banks have this, uh, like, was she doing the Meteora a lot before? 
Uh, she's always done, yeah. Like but adult, I think I, now I, she's doing a lot more. Yeah, no, just I'm I just just curious because you know I've I've just noted that like yeah. Corey Graves has been saying Meteora like specifically. I don't right? think I think it's... before they would just used to be like oh the double knees the double knees. Now they actually <laughs> <laughs> now that now they've given it a name. This was a pretty long yeah. match, uh, you know, for Nikki Cross. You know, I mean, it's uh, yeah. I thought she looked good though. Huh? You know, uh, it, it's yeah, a it's a the- it's a bummer that Nikki Cross is in these matches and not Alexa Bliss, right? Because I feel like they're protecting Alexa. You know, they're protecting Alexa Bliss, give the losses to Nikki Cross, but it's like shit, man. Yeah. Those those will start piling up. Yeah, uh, and I guess you know with the uh, Alexa's injury history, they don't want to overwork her sometimes. I guess. But. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Never thought of that. But I mean, Nikki didn't. Uh, I mean, she did lose, but there were some shenanigans going on here. Bailey shit. So of course. And then after the match, Sasha's still hungry, so she attacks Bliss and hits her with a backstabber bank statement combo. So, heels being heels. Classic heels. I guess that's the one thing. Um, when this draft comes, this, the women's tag titles are the only, like, dual-branded titles now, really. Yeah, it seems like uh, something that both the networks would have to work with. And I'm curious, because, you know, of the network competition now... Who has more influence? Will Fox would Fox rather have the titles? Would USA rather have the titles? It will be interesting to see where uh, how how those belts in particular are handled because I feel like the twenty four seven is more of a little like throwaway title. It's more of a gimmick thing. Yeah, uh, I guess those both can just be floaters. Yeah, they now. they can just kind of be floaters, right? But I think what's most important is like to build women's tag in both divisions. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, no, right now they've got teams on both shows, which is good. So it's like pay per view to pay per view are just like ongoing little tournaments in each division to t- determine whoever the next uh, number one contender um, uh, would be. But I could certainly see that being something on SmackDown where they're like, yep, we want those belts. Uh, so there's a chance those things could move. We want the belts. Give us the belts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Brock Lesnar, Brock. Uh, <laughs> no, they're they're just trying to pack everything next week. So he's he's announced for the Raw season premiere as well, along with the likes of Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair and some other dinosaurs. Dude, uh, who? <laughs> if the Fiend takes out Ric Flair, woo! It's done. It's done. Amazing. It's done. Hulk Hogan would let the him put, do it. The push Ric is Flair, over. You know, I think Ric Flair would die. That's the thing. Like, oh, you think he would just die? Oh yeah, for sure. This would take like, like at least, at least with him and Batista, all he had to do was drag him out <laughs> by his collar. <laughs> well, all he's got. Is but this requires a little bit more. Like Bray would have to like gently bring him to the <laughs> to the floor, yeah, yeah. gently put his hand in his mouth. You know. I think he could pull it off. I think he, he may, might be able to pull it off. This raw, this raw season finale, season finale of raw season premiere. Yeah. Whatever it is. Well, no, this is the finale. Yeah, next. This week. is the finale. Oh, okay, next week is the season premiere. Premier. Right, 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 right. Right. Let's move on. All right, let's move along to the the woman we've been talking about so much this week, the beautiful sassy Southern Belle, Lacey Evans, taking on the also beautiful Ember Moon. Um. But, yeah, right off the bat, Lacey Evans, she wipes out, pulls out her hanky, throws it at Ember. Uh, but then Ember nails Lacey with this huge drop kick to the face, which they show in slow motion. It was, like, right in her throat, in the neck. It was painful. Did you see that slow-mo? I did see that in slow-mo. Yeah, yeah. that was that stiff. Was stiff strike. Uh, yeah, and I noticed the ref was very quick to snatch that hanky and put it in his pocket for later. Uh, so, uh, of course, that's, a, of course that's something you would notice. <laughs> Right. No, if that was me, you know, I'd, I'd take the hanky. I bet I'd nobody put, else in the entire arena noticed that. <laughs> I'd put it. I'd put it in a nice frame, you know, hanging nice in fra- my Yeah, room. oh, you know, like when you like, you go to your grandma's house and they have like a doily in a frame for some reason. It's just kind of like that. It's like, oh, that's a uh, that's Lacey and I would Evans' take a picture. doily. <laughs> I would take like a picture from the from that night's episode of her holding the hanky and frame it next to it, so you'd know that's the hanky. That's the one, guys. <laughs> that's the one, guys. I Anyways. swear. I swear. Uh, Lacey hits her cool slingshot drop kick that she's been doing lately. And then uh, Amber does this crazy spot where she's hanging onto the bottom rope by her toes. And then she like lifts herself up, hits the stunner onto Lacey on the floor. Uh, and she goes up top for the eclipse, but Lacey snatches her by the hair, then nails a woman's right, causing her to fall off the top rope into the ring. But Lacey doesn't pin her. She then she wants to embarrass her, so she locks in the sharpshooter to insult Natalia and forcing Amber Moon to tap out. 
forcing the tap. I think right after that, we go to a quick uh, a quick backstage with Natalia and backstage Sarah. Yeah, Sarah Schreiber. That's your, oh yeah, uh, that's the last name. I finally learned her name. I finally got it down. Yeah. It doesn't have as nice of a ring as backstage Kayla. Yeah. Backstage Sarah. Char- Kayla Braxton, Charlie Caruso. Backstage Charlie, I think, is the ultimate backstage. They name. might not even because they made they made Renee Young change her name. Her name was supposed to be Renee Paquette. I think that's her. Yeah, I think that's like, her real that's name. Stupid French. Like, that's yeah. too French so Canadian. Too like stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Um, <laughs> so there, the, yeah, there's that. There's some name talk. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I guess, yeah, we, Natalia Lacey Evans is not over. Uh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm thinking so, pre-show at Hell in a Cell. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's nice to have a woman's feud that doesn't involve a championship. So of course, go. yeah. So, Every time they happen, they always feel a little bit flat. Yeah, because they never. Yeah, they don't do much. You know, it's like, hey, your dad's dead. I'm gonna put a picture of him on a table. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Your dad's dead. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? They've been milking that with Natty for like two years now. That was a. Uh, yeah. What? That was a la- <laughs> TLC last that year. That was Ruby right? Riot. Yeah, Ruby Riot. <laughs> and, uh, that was such a fun match. The uh, Jim Neidhart on a table, table match. There's your gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Neidhart on a table. I still want it. Oh, that was fun. What did Those you? Fun what times. did you want? What did you want? <laughs> I wanted her to start having the table come out and manage her during that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, like the rest of the table. She it's starts like, like, this is for you, Dad. Standing by rig side. And then it gets weird. Yeah, and stand- then. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it gets weird. then it gets, someone breaks the table and she goes hysterical, starts crying. And- she turns heel. Yeah. What's up next? But anyway. We get a new episode of the Firefly Funhouse. Um, a picture of Kane is now added to the wall of pain, his latest victim. Then he hangs a mysterious all black picture. I don't know what that's for yet. Yeah. Um, well, we got still got time. We got time. And then we got Ramblin' Rabbit and Huskis. They're fighting over a Seth Rollins action figure. Uh, they become such big fans of Seth, they don't want to share. But Bray's like, okay, guys, come on. Sharing's not easy, but it's never good to be too attached to something. If you love it too much, you become weak and vulnerable. So... And the rabbit's like, uh, you know, that's all good, but we don't want the fiend to hurt Seth. So Bray says maybe he wants to protect Seth Rollins. And uh, he doesn't like to share, but I think you two can. So he grabs a toy, breaks it in half, and then he does the classic stare. And the see you in hell. See you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another five, another week, another Firefly Funhouse, another inc- incredible vignette. Like, these are not going to stop being so entertaining and... Uh, you you can never truly you can never really gauge what the what the audience is thinking, kind of like live. Um, yeah, you know, but they always seem to enjoy. Yeah, it. they always try to do like a pan in and pan out. But uh, yeah. the pop anytime the lights go out, uh, the pop is <laughs> huge, huge. Oh, yeah. Every one of the time. tops, um, tops of the pops. It's uh, it's real. T- yeah, I you know we got we got to give one to Bray Wyatt too, right? To like to get himself back over. Without being in the ring, yeah, you know, I think we do. You know, like uh, it's it's it, yeah, it's real. Just a, really, just a testament to Bray Wyatt as a performer, and maybe even the writing team and the, working yeah, on I was this. Say, like, right, one of the most consistently just well thought out booked. They didn't rush it. They didn't push anything. Like since, this has been going on since like what May or something. Yeah, pro, and every week pre we look summer, to Yeah, way before SummerSlam. Yeah, so May something around there. Yeah. And yeah, we look forward to it. Every time we see the Firefly Funhouse pop up or we see the lights shut down, everyone's everyone's excited. Do you sing the and song when you watch it? I sing the song. <laughs> uh, whenever Firefly <laughs> whenever Firefly Funhouse, when I, I see the graphic, I just sing, We're really glad that you're like you know, they've got me. The they've full got version. me. <laughs> there's a there's more words than that though, right? Uh and this Every is once a, a friendship while they play the that'll never ever end. <laughs> I mean the other verse, there's like another verse. There's a second verse? Yeah, if you listen to the full. They, they don't play it very often. Okay, I'll have to come back. Is that, is that like that mysterious third verse in Friends in Low Places that only the real fans know? Is that is, <laughs> that, is like, it kind of like that? <laughs> it's like, you know, the Friends theme song? Have you ever heard the full version of the Friends oh, theme oh, song? Oh, the whole second half or the... um. Yeah, and it's like, oh, well, this isn't good anymore. Or there's a second <laughs> verse to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme. Yeah, the and extended version. if a DJ's it, playing it, the it, extended it, version... It goes it doesn't have the same flow. It goes from high. I just think nobody knows the words because it's not in like the, yeah. the theme. It's in like the full version of the song. 
Yeah, it's like a three minute. It's like it took him a long time to get to Bel Air this time. <laughs> it took him a long it's time like, to get there. And then I took the bus. It's and like- then I took the train. And then my mama said, <laughs> now you're going to feel some pain. And then, was that actually yeah. it? No. That was off that the was, top of your head? That was freestyle, man. Freestyle. I also like it. It's like Little when you're Smith. at a bar or you're at a club or a karaoke or something and Lose Yourself by Eminem comes on because everybody knows the words up until Snap Back to Reality, Oh, There Goes Gravity. <laughs> so uh, you'll, you'll, the entire bar, the entire karaoke scene will be flooded. You know, time's up. Oh, oh snap spaghetti. back to reality. Oh, the ghost gravity. Uh, 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 oh, man, but it won't. Uh, 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 lose yourself. <laughs> it just dies immediately. It's a... Uh, but the beat goes on. Da, da, dum, da, dum, da, da. <laughs> but the beat goes on. Ba, da, dum, ba, boom. <laughs> yeah. That's literally the word. That's literally that's literally the word. Eminem took a he, he took a sick day on uh, finishing that verse. Uh, Academy Award winner for that. Yes. He won an Oscar. Yeah. Um. Up until very recently, Eminem had more Oscars than Leonardo DiCaprio. That is quite the feat. Yeah. Want to know another one? Three Six Mafia has as many Oscars as, as Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. Well, what was their what uh, film? Were they? They on wrote then? the theme of. Uh, they wrote the music in Hustle and Flow, the uh, oh. the film starring. Uh, I know the film. Anthony Anderson and uh, Terrence Howard. I think. <laughs> uh, I forgot how the song goes, but uh, def- yeah. definitely won, definitely won the award for that one. What do we have coming All up right. next, Mike? We got Truth, Our Truth, and Carmella our coming truth. out to the ring. Well, I think yes, before our. I think before there was a little, uh, we did get a little backstage thing of Carmella. Um, no, sorry, this was later. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. So as I was. Keep going. Um, sorry. Truth and Carmella come running out to the ring, and then the gaggle comes out shortly after. Carmella grabs the microphone. And she's like, you guys, come on. We can't take this anymore. Just stop. Stop chasing us. I think, on the I think for- Corey Graves called them the Horde. Maybe this uh, this week. I was hoping he would say gaggle, <laughs> Lord. but you know he said the horde. Okay. So she says, you know, we've been on the run for four months straight with this title, and Truth's like, don't worry, we gonna get out of this. Uh, my clown friend gonna give us the ride to Derry. So I guess the reference to it that I don't think many people would have got. I didn't get that. Yeah, I don't even know. Is the I don't even know if part two is in theaters right now. I don't yeah, know. It, it was. It was not a. It 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 is out in theaters. I saw the first one. I watched okay, it. I up. saw the first one. It was good. I, I, prefer- I wanted it to be. I liked it. I wanted it to be scarier. I still, I preferred the the nineteen ninety one. Still, I think. Okay, I've never I've never With, seen uh, the Tim Curry version. Tim Curry, yeah, his portrayal of it is Pennywise. I just thought it would be scarier. Like yeah. I, I watched. Nothing, the, I mean, I watched the whole thing, and I was by myself in the dark. I tried to give myself the atmosphere. Uh, yeah. I just wasn't. I I don't get spooked very easily, so uh, maybe maybe it was no, that. I thought either. it was. A gr- I love horror movies. I love horror. Movies. I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, I love. Yeah, it was you know, a good film. You know, the the kids, uh, the guy from Stranger Things, and the other kids, they were all good. The, the way it was shot. I want to see part two. Everything but... about it was great. I was just like, "Fuck, scare yeah. me! <laughs> God damn it! You yeah. ugh, scare me!" Um, I just saw. What? I don't know if you've heard of. Uh, if you heard of the film Midsummer? Midsummer, no. Midsummer. Midsummer. No, no. No, I have That's not. That's a good horror film. Okay. Good horror film that came out this past. Well, see, you know, I love watching horror movies. Um, uh, Matthew, my roommate, uh, can't watch them. They're not his no, thing. They're just... they're not his thing. So uh, unfortunately, is it, is, it the, is it like the gore? Is it the content? Is it the the tension? I think it's just, the, just the spooks. The spooks. He just doesn't like the spooks. Sometimes you get spooked. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So see, I feel like I've been into them for so long, from such a young age, that like I don't get spooked. I, like I can be like I can be grossed out by things. I'm like, oh, that's nasty, but nothing, nothing would like actually scare me that I couldn't watch the movie. I I, I also agree. <laughs> I think there was there's certainly a point in horror movies where I might jump in my chair or I might be like, yeah, ah. you can get surprised. But it's taken. It's not like I have the dream the following night about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, we should do a horror episode one day. It's Halloween time. It, every Halloween episode, there's always some kind of pumpkin match. Uh, <laughs> That's true. There's always, there's always, uh, then, you know. I, then the Thanksgiving, we get like the gravy bowl match. I'm picture, the, I'm picturing, you know, like uh, someone goes under the ring to pull out the thumbtacks. Everyone's stoked, and then they empty it out, and it's just like candy. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's just like, like a bad, sack of candy. What, what the bad candies that no one's likes? Yeah, a know. bunch of Tootsie Rolls or something. Or yeah, those little, but, remember those little, uh, they, they would, they would be like candy hamburgers, 
that were probably the size of oh, like I a love loony. Those. Oh, you like those? <laughs> I, I love those little gummies. Yeah, you could separate the bun from the from meat. The meat. From the meat. <laughs> if you don't like tomato, just take off the tomato. <laughs> you don't even, <laughs> even need to eat it. all just sugar. You know, I mean, but you know, uh, keep it authentic. At least, you know, if you don't like tomatoes in, in real life. Keep it 100. Keep it kayfabe. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, we got on this tangent after that it reference. Um, so Mella says, Carmela's like, I can't do it. I can't eat. I can't sleep. There's too much. I can't do it. So I was like, oh, is this the breakup? So Truth, you know, he sympathizes. He, he comes in. He gives Carmela a nice hug. But then she rolls him up for the three count. New 24-7 champion. I've been waiting for this. They had to do it eventually. They had to move it over to the women's division, I think. Of course, yeah. we Or had- even just Carmela. Like, she's been so... Tighten it to this thing. She had to have it eventually. Of course. And yes, Maria but- Kanellis won. Uh, she might be a two-time champ, I think, on that Raw reunion yeah. episode. A couple other women um, also jumped there. It was only a amount of time, of course. Uh, so she pins our truth. Our truth is a little confused at first, but then eventually he's, you know, celebrating with her. And all the men are standing there like, now what the fuck do we yeah. do? Like, oh. And then and, uh, this, ha- is what, this is what hurt me the most, Mike, is what happened okay. directly after this. Was well, let me let me just get Renee's line out there first because it was great. Okay, what did he say? So, what did she say? So Carmella, Carmella's running around celebrating, and then Renee's like, "Wow, Graves, you can finally consummate the twenty four seven title." <laughs> no way, so. I missed that. <laughs> oh yeah, Renee's got a she. Every, she pulls out some zingers once in a while. And sometimes, and sometimes there are those moments where somebody will say something actually funny, and then there's like ten yeah. seconds of silence because you can tell they're all <laughs> fucking laughing about whatever yeah, they said. Like, damn it. <laughs> Congratulations, the 24-7 can finally be consummated. Uh, way to go. But of course, so then the men are standing there now just thinking like, now what the fuck do we do? We've just been running around aimlessly. Drake Maverick had this like little puppy dog look on his face. And this yeah. is what hurt me though. We see, so Carmella's <laughs> now the champ. The men yeah. aren't going to go after her. But there is now. I mean, they can. Well, I mean, of course they can. But you know, I don't, but, I don't yeah, we're not no, ready to cross that bound yet. But now there is a gaggle of women. Yeah, the new faction. The new the faction. Gaggle. So, of course, I think Sarah Logan ran right out there. That's like, okay, yeah. I can picture you that. Sarah Logan, you know, Dana Brooke was in Dana there. Dana Brooke was the, in the there. Iconics. What, at least one. Well, Billy Kay. I don't think I saw. I, I just saw Peyton Bloody. I didn't see Peyton Bloody I think, Royce. I think Peyton pulled up the rear. I don't think she was. Uh, I just saw, Bi- took a while I just saw Billy Bloody Kay. But what Tamina hurt, was in there, too. What hurt me so much about this was that, you know, of course, so now they're doing they're doing the same bit. I think like Carmella tries to run away with our truth on her on his on his, her back. And then that doesn't really work. So then they like switch it up. Yeah, he just picks her up. He picks her up or something. But it was seeing Asuka running after uh, the 24 yeah. seven title, seeing Asuka and Ka- Kyrie Sane. They both did it. I think that was on SmackDown, but. Either way. Oh, was that the next night? I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. I, I, either way. Either yeah, way. Either way. Still, either way. Still, seeing, yeah, Kyrie said seeing those she had her two, telescope looking at the title. She was, it was unfortunate. Seeing those two specifically yeah. having to go after that title, it's just like, ah, fuck, you know? Because yeah. you don't see, you, yeah, you don't see Sasha and Bailey running out after this thing and... Like there's there's a threshold or there's like a there's a sta- there's a type of person who goes after the twenty four seven title yeah. and for some reason the person holding the title the R truth has always been the fucking pinnacle of the division it's never the, the pinnacle pe- it's He's, never the yeah. people chasing it it's always whoever's on top <laughs> is uh, whoever's the whoever's winning for that week um, Carmella could be a long term option we don't know yeah no this is fun this I mean uh, you know she did so much helping out Truth so now it's his turn to help her out a bit so. Uh, yeah, all the men, the men gaggle. They were just left standing in the ring with their dick in their hands. So who knows? What they're but now, 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 what's Lucha House Party gonna do? <laughs> uh, well, Prob- sure as hell not wrestle. Yeah. What do we have coming up next, Mike? We've got King Corbin versus Chad Gable, and Corbin he comes out with his new. He had a new king styled uh-huh. entrance, some some royal trumpet fare, and uh, the king gear that was destroyed last week has been replaced a bit more. Corbin style, so he has like a fur coat and a, a more dark gothic looking crown made of Valerian steel. Yeah, it's good. It, it has it has more of like a you know like a Game of Thrones Westeros kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah, suits, suits Corbin's thing. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Corbin cuts a promo before the match. He's, he decrees that he is no longer going to fight anyone under five feet five inches. Uh, so of course, more short jokes. But uh, is that how tall yeah. Chad Gable is? He's only five five. No, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I could see him being at least like 5'8 or something. Five, Wikipedia, five, five, Wikipedia has him here at 5'8, 202. 
Yeah. That's a big motherfucker. Well, I, yeah, I was right. I don't know if you also heard. He's almost not a cruiserweight. He's almost, he's almost a cruiserweight. I don't know if you heard um, the, uh, the scary potential news about some things, some trademarks that WWE has recently filed for. Um, uh, and include what, Gable. Uh, well, I, I read a couple things, but the one that stuck out, I don't really remember the other ones. The one that stuck out is that WWE recently filed a trademark for the name Shorty G. <laughs> and as soon as I saw that, I was terrified that yeah. that hopefully that's <laughs> no i mean they can't they, they but can't. they could that's the problem they could but i mean no but i mean they might i they don't know it. they would do it so good with gable these last three four weeks uh, rebrand him a shorty g yeah um but no i thought this match was good again like their king of the ring final um, another yeah, an, an, yeah another another great match you know um yeah the crowd was into it they were really into all the gables Gable kicks out of a big choke slam. Yeah, Corbin uh, was looking strong. Those choke slams are huge. They're good. Yeah, um, I like it. It's a good move for him. Uh, uh, Chad Gable's uh, super high bridging uh, yes, German suplex. I remembered the name, uh, but then I forgot it. Oh, they call they call it something now. <laughs> He's got because you know how sometimes like he he does it and he holds on and he rolls through and then he hits it. Mm -hmm. They have like a specific name, but I can't. Chaos theory. That's what it's called. chaos. So he theory. hits the chaos theory. Okay. Um, yeah, awesome. And he hits that picture perfect moonsault again for a near fall. Crowd was on their feet at this point, chanting Gable. Uh, he flips his way out of the end of days and locks in the ankle lock, but King Corbin crawls to the side of the ring and grabs his scepter and smacks Gable with it, causing a disqualification. And then he continues to beat him down some more with the scepter, and he puts on his king gear to stand tall over Gable. Uh, evil King Corbin. Evil King Corbin, of course. And it could, there could only, it could only be that way, right? We, y y yeah. You know, it's... Uh, and, you know, and retrospectively, we were talking to the entire tournament. Guys like Andrade were dropping out. Guys like this, that, the other. And it, it seems like I'm super, you know, I think I think everyone's super stoked on this, this result. You know, having Corbin win meant getting Chad Gable over in a way that maybe wasn't possible before. Yeah. And yeah, like Gable. Now that the tournament's still over, he's still on TV, and the crowd's still into him. And so. everyone, you're always everybody's gonna always love an underdog, right? Like that's never going yeah. to change. Um, yeah. And and we just get to do that again, you know? What whether this was the plan or they just sort of stumbled into uh, great chemistry between these two dudes. I think um, you know this is one of the better programs we kind of have going on on the show right now. Yeah, I could see them doing the the blow off match at. Hell in a Cell, and then who knows what they'll what what brands they'll each end up on after that. So we don't know. Let's go from there. Let's go from but there. Yeah, I th you know Gable Gable should beat him at least once. Hopefully, clean in the ring. So. Clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on uh, to some. Uh, I think we have a Fatal Five Way some action coming up next. Well, right before that, there was one other thing. There was the quick uh, another subtitled promo from AOP, but this time they transitioned right out from that. They like got out of their chairs, walked backstage, started beating up Heath Slater. And they went back and sat down again. I like that. It's kind of cool the way you, they shot it. Yeah. And and what what's always tough for me about these backstage interviews is that I feel like it's it's it, it it's turning into this Alistair Black effect where the production value is great. So certainly something far more similar to uh to what AEW has been doing on their Road Two shows, uh, yeah. where it's like a formal interview. You sit down and you answer. Or, you know when you talk. Uh, but you 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 can only we can only do these so much before now what. Now what? And now what? And uh, Alistair Black unfortunately <laughs> fell into this hole where it was like he was delivering these fire promos, but nobody – he's not getting booked to do anything, right? Let's yeah. – you know, I'd love to see AOP move into this tag division because the, uh, certainly the Raw tag is a little uh, jumbled up right now, and I think the SmackDown tag is really taking a back seat. They, they are teams, but nobody really showing dominance, right? We have enough tag teams, so let's fucking go yeah, for, for it. Yeah, for – yeah, the last couple of months, the tag teams have just kind of been involved with the other title feuds, mm -hmm. like with the Revival and the New Day and Orton and Kofi and all those guys. And yeah, yeah, let's get the focus. Let's start something fresh, right? I think also the introduction of the AEW Tag Tournament, I think, will also maybe light a little fire under the ass of uh, WWE. We have a lot of established tag teams already. You know, everyone from the OC to AOP. You know, we have heavy machinery. We have the Viking experience. We have all of these guys ready to go. Let's let them go. Yeah. Cut them loose. Cut them loose, baby. 
Uh, let's move on to that Fatal 5-Way that I was just talking about, of course. Uh, we have Fatal 5-Way for the number one contendership for Seth Rollins's, or maybe it won't even be his, Universal Championship. Uh, who's in the match? We got Shinsuke Nakamura. We have Robert Roode. We have AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, and Ricochet. Uh, try it, It's a, f- a Fatal 5-Way elimination, <laughs> too, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, elimination match, so the winner gets that title shot on the season premiere next week. Uh so of course. Oh wait! Oh so well, oh a, so it will be Monday. So pre Hell in a Cell. This will be next. Yeah, this is before Hell in a Cell. Shit. Okay. So I mean, you could be seeing Robert Roode versus the Fiend for the Universal Title <laughs> at Hell in a Cell. Or or we could see Shinsuke Nakamura. Or we could see Ricochet. Yeah. Or we could. Yeah. <laughs> we could see any of these five guys. Um, I don't know what? But you know, you put you uh, you put this much talent into a match. Uh, I'm always going to be on board. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, this uh, was a great match. I think Ricochet came the... out super hot. Uh, what I remember, and of course, uh, Sami, Z- Sami Zayn is also side stage dealing with his boy Nakamura. He does the entrance now. Yeah, I think it's about time we get rid of heel Nakamura theme. Yeah, you have one of the best theme songs that you're not even using right ever. Now and also, there's original. this weird, there's this weird blank space when Sami Zayn goes Shinsuke Nakamura, and then they play the thing, and it's like the sound of like them plugging in their guitar and shit. Yeah. I'm like, no, Shinsuke Nakamura, whoa, yeah. like that's a banger. That's a banger. Yeah, man. If you ever, if you ever, folks what? at home, also, if you ever need, uh, you know, you know, you're feeling down, you need to be brought up on a day or something. Watch <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura's SmackDown Live debut. When they had the live <laughs> entrance with Buddy with the with with the violin, it is yeah. it is the biggest it is the biggest pop you will see. It, you know, you, <laughs> you you can't get bigger than an entire arena screaming your theme song, singing song, and yeah. Especially when it's a really easy theme song. <laughs> it's like it doesn't. It's not like there's words. Yeah, like there are people there who heard it for the first time, and then around the second go, they're already singing. You're like, along. oh, okay, that's it. Whoa, yeah. whoa. there's no words, just woes. <laughs> okay, great, let's go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Um. Yeah, dude. This match. Uh, Boy, my cup. This match. This match was all over the place, Mike. Anything you wanna? Anything uh, you wanna cover specifically? Uh, I'll just get some. Yeah. So Ricochet hits that recoil on Rude, but then Nakamura runs in and Kinsashes him. So Ricochet's the first eliminated. Uh, AJ hits a big brain buster to Ray on the apron, which looks great. And then AJ jumps in, uh, hits the phenomenal forearm on Nakamura, eliminating him. But then immediately after, Rude hits the glorious DDT and pins AJ. So it's down to Rude and Mysterio. So, uh, yeah, they have a short little back and forth match. Ray reverses the glorious DDT to set up for the 619 into Frog Splash, and he gets the win. So, Ray Mysterio will get a universal title shot against Seth Rollins next week. Next week, um, Monday. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone expects Ray to have a chance of winning, but it should be should still be a fun match. You know, and, and the Fiend does have a penchant for taking out uh, legends. So, uh, with, yeah, with, he could just show up and fuck the whole thing. Could you know. just, he could just show up. I mean, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah so which is great. Be a which fun is great. This I'm will sure be, be this will be arguably Ray Mysterio's largest, biggest match since coming back to WWE. I think. Uh, I don't think he's had a title opportunity since that return, besides the U.S. title, which he held uh, briefly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. No. So Yo, be what a fun if match. the Fiend takes out Dominic? That'd be great. That would be that would, uh, just fucking. Yeah. He just. I want him just taking out audience members, <laughs> just going up into just the fucking everyone. crowd. Yeah. I'm like, ah, just get taking people out. <laughs> I want this motherfucker taking everybody out in a in a kin like what Braun Strowman would do, but without being Braun Strowman. I just want you fucking yeah. leveling people. <laughs> Let's move on to that main event. Let's move on to that main event, of course, that we were being promised. We got Seth Rollins. We got Braun Strowman in a non-title match. These motherfuckers just going at it, of course. Uh, Braun Strowman comes out with his typical brute force self. Yeah. Uh, just just bowling over Seth Rollins. <laughs> no, that was pretty good. As he likes to say. Uh, just bowling over <laughs> Seth Rollins, you know, trying to get that uh, win, you know, overwhelming yeah. him with his size and fury. Yeah. Those hands. That he's going to get. Those hands. Um, uh, wh- yeah, eventually he lifts Seth up in position for the power slam, but that's when the lights start to shut down. And everybody knows. We all know it's The Fiend. We love it. We all know. Uh, Literally every single person in that room knew it was The Fiend, except for Braun Strowman. I think he's the only <laughs> one who was like, huh? Power yeah. outage? Zoinks. <laughs> 
What? What? Uh, <laughs> so the fiend appears. He locks in that man of Strowman, which is a great way of putting it over to see a huge guy like that go down to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so Strowman, he passes out to the claw, and then the fiend starts stalking Seth Rollins when he's down. And then Seth just starts screaming, Ah! 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 He's like scared <laughs> of this person. Like he's ah! like, ah! 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 Yeah. Seth. You know, he's one of the one of the top wrestlers, not one of the top no, actors. Not one of the top actors, that's for sure. <laughs> you know what? But, uh, it, so so of course this this ends in a no contest, of course, you know, because the fiend yeah. uh the fiend the fiend came out. Um uh, I like though Strowman starts to come to a bit and then he, he goes to go at the fiend, but then he gets locked in again with the mandible claw. So he, and, and and Bray Wyatt told us in the Firefly Funhouse earlier on, right? Like he knows what it's like to be abandoned. By those that mean most to him, right? So him coming back on Braun, a former Wyatt family member, yeah. makes sense, right? You know, you, you got to think Eric Rowan's next. You got to think Luke Harper is next, right? He's somehow nobody is losing by jobbing to the Fiend. Somehow, like, yeah. <laughs> y- you know, you, you take that mandible claw and it's not like Braun Strowman didn't lose anything. No. no, not at all. He just yeah. fucking yeah. he just took it. <laughs> like I, like I don't know. Like this this you know, we uh, Bray Wyatt has been booked so well that nobody's losing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, so he's so he knocks down Braun again. He just stares Seth down. And the crowd's chanting, "Holy shit!" The arena goes black, and then we hear Bray's laughter to close the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a loop. <laughs> Great ending. It's great. It's great. And, it's fantastic. Uh, fantastic ending for this uh, this horrifying character, you know. Um, and he's still we he's not even overexposed yet, and it's uh, no. it's just something new, something new. You you don't have to build a character in the ring. You can build a character in a promo. You can build a character through a well edited video. You know, I mean, we're open to different ways for people being to people being booked. Hell yeah. You know, I mean, I feel as though we've been watching AEW the last, you know, however long, um, or, you know, their last shows they've been put on with really no buildup. They're putting dudes over without a weekly <laughs> show. There are ways that we can suspend our disbelief and just enjoy the fuck out of something that's happening. And The Fiend, hell yeah, they're doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Folks, that also, was, whoa, sure, shit. What fun you, fact. What you got? What you got? I got a, just, a fun, just a fun fact. Nakamura, he has been probably the most consistent roster guy because he was drafted to SmackDown years ago and this was his very first match ever on Raw, Shinsuke Nakamura. Really? Shit. Yeah, after, you're right. After wrestling. You're right. Have not, yeah. uh, he is not, he is not, you know, for being such a stud performer, he never made he that. He never flip-flopped. He never made that wild card thing. Yeah. There you so go. There you go. Well, it was a big loss. Well, there you have it, folks. That was our Monday Night Raw. Um, so fucking good. I love this stuff. Uh, Mike, it was a great episode. It was a great, great episode. episode. It was a great season finale, right? It was. They were in the cliffhanger of uh, Seth and Bray. Of course. The, uh, of course. Mike, I think uh, it's about time we take a bit of a break. Yes. Mike, we're going to come back. We got some trivia coming up. We got SmackDown Live. So, folks, you're going to want to stick around. Yes. Okay, stick around. <laughs> back folks we're back here on the uh the shoot brothers podcast hope you enjoyed your break because we sure as hell did no. well sorry i can't mike i can't account for your enjoyability of the break uh sorry i, I did not mean to speak for you uh, well i'll allow it this time <laughs> this time oh this time you'll allow it folks we're gonna kick off the second half of our show the only way we know how to which is with our trivia trivia Woo, Mike, I got questions for you. Mike, uh, you probably also have questions for me. Yeah, I think I've got, uh, what, like three questions, three and a half. Okay, cool. I've also got three, so maybe we'll do that. Or, uh, you know, I've got four, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna kick off with one of mine. Start us Mike, I'm taking a pitch. I'm taking a page out of your book for ah. trivia, because here are some wrestler names in other words. Woo. We have played this game before. <laughs> um so like wrestling riddle thing is that what you're... Ex- exactly yeah so it's going to be okay. it's going to be I'm going to I'm going to say a, I'm going to say words that <laughs> and I have to figure you're out you're going to have to figure out who I'm talking about 
All right. Okay, we're gonna I, we're gonna kind of go. I have four of them. We'll kind of go back and forth with your questions. I'm gonna start off a little bit easier. We'll go a little bit harder as we get there. All right. Question number one. November old. November old. Uh, so <laughs> November old. There's words in my head that I'm trying to get out. What are they? November old, you say? Yes. So I'm looking for a two-word name. Yes. Two name. Two-word name. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. Why. This is supposed to be the easy one, right? This is, well, this is supposed to be the easy one. You know what? There, no. there is. Am I, I might just be. <laughs> no, there is a chance, though, that you you will better understand the format after you get this answer. Okay. You know, if that if that uh, makes sense, like you'll understand kind of what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I'm having trouble on this one. I can pop out the answer. That's no. That's no problem. It, you it, pop. Pop. Uh, yeah. Sure. Pop, pop out the answer. The answer. November old. We're looking for May young. Ah, of course. You see what course. you see what I'm saying here? Okay. I, got that, the, that, I had the young in my head, but I couldn't. For some reason, I, I should have just gone over every month. Every right. month. Now I was thinking. I think in November and May are equidistant from each other, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. No, it was good. It was too good for me. Too woo. <laughs> Mike, what you got for me? Question number one. All right. Yeah, some of these we kind of went over unintentionally earlier because I had a little bit of Firefly Funhouse trivia. Okay, great. So, yeah, one of them we talked about a bit. I was going to give you a, a half point, two half points, if you can name the opening or all the lyrics to the Firefly Funhouse song. Um, Yeah, so, <laughs> so we're really glad that you're our friend. This is a friendship that can never, ever end. Yeah, so that's a half point. Okay, that's the half point. And then there's something that's equally as long. Um, like another. And I feel like it's, I feel like it's, yeah, just like, <laughs> dan, is this the same theme? It's I the would same exact I would, melody. Same I everything. would never be able to say it. I, I bet yeah. it's going to have, um, it's going to, it's going to have something to do with, uh, you know, if um, there's always a friend for you there. Uh, <laughs> there's always, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, it's going to be something about you can come here and be yourself. Very much, very much. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so those are my the, guesses. What the are th line is, if you're feeling lonely today, come along and throw your cares away. If you're feeling lonely today, come along and today? throw your cares away. Yeah. There you have it. There you have it. There it is. That's the second half. Yeah, I want that tattooed on a All fucking... Right. Have you seen... I <laughs> saw uh, somewhere on the dirt sheets, I saw someone got a fucking Firefly Funhouse tattoo. I believe like it. the logo with uh, Sister Abigail, with all the cartoons. Mercy characters. the Buzzard, yeah, full cartoon. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, this just happened like four months ago. <laughs> You're already doing yeah, it up. That's crazy. Okay, Mike. Next question for you. All right. All right. We already figured out November old was May Young. Yes. Mike, my next question is: Sidewalk Cat. Sidewalk Cat. Uh... Mm -hmm. Sidewalk cat. Talk it out. Talk it I out. Feel like, no, I, I know. I know. I feel like all the. I feel like I'm complicating it more. You might. You. Head. You might be. Because picture. This is my knowledge. So it's not like I'm going back to some fucking. <laughs> it's some like obscure WCW person. Yeah. Sidewalk cat. <laughs> These are all cat. in my wheel. Tiger lion. <laughs> Tiger lion. Um. Sidewalk, road, uh, bu 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 road cat, <laughs> uh, sidewalk cat, sidewalk cat. This is really fun being on the other side. I see how yeah. I see how you had fun uh, when giggles. it was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just hmm. You were on the right path with road. <laughs> Road sidewalk cats. What you got, Mike? Mm -hmm. You can throw an answer. I don't know. I'm just hmm. I know. I, I didn't think you'd be so stumped. <laughs> I feel. I know. As soon as I hear it, I'm gonna be blue. You are. You are exactly, and that's the, and that's what's fun for uh, me. Why am I? 
Give me, give me some, uh, some roster. What roster are they on? Um, They're on an active roster. Um, ret- uh, definitely retired. Attitude era. Retired attitude era. Um, what's what else can I do? What else can I do? Uh, a faction WWF. Um, <laughs> attitude era faction <sighs> member. Yeah, whose first name is Road. <laughs> road <laughs> road oh. i don't know here we go it's road dog oh road dog Jeez. sidewalk Why cat so road it? dog yeah. degeneration x okay so i gotta think opposite the opposite of cat is dog you know you're kind of thinking you know yeah exactly <laughs> it's not quite synonyms but you know yes. we're not hey it's uh yeah. we're you know it's all there. I was I'm, too I'm obsessed with the adding, cat. I'm not, the cat got in my head. The cat got in your head. See, I'm not adding words. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was thinking like tiger, like Jewish and thunder liger, and all. Uh, these then you're like, does it rhyme? What's liger mean in a different language? It's liger. Yeah, I mean, t- liger is a real animal, right? Is- <laughs> you're right. It is. It's half lion, half tiger. We're aware yes. of the species. <laughs> all right, I'm doing bad today, but um, let's see how you can do. We've got. Firefly Funhouse, can you name all six members of the Funhouse? Okay, okay. Uh, all the members of the Firefly Funhouse. So we have uh, Ramblin' Rabbit. Yes. We have Sister Abigail. Um, okay, no, Abby. Abby. Yes, Abby the Witch. Abby the Witch. Okay, that's, uh, okay. I, 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 oh, yeah. That, that uh, one, that yeah, one shouldn't good. count. Wait. That one shouldn't count. But I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we'll go give it. Um, God, we've got uh, um, Mercy the Buzzard. Yes. Uh, I guess Bray Wyatt. Yes. Okay, he is a member of the Firefly Funhouse. Okay, who do I have? So I have Ramblin' Rabbit, Abby the Witch. You got Mer- four. Mercy the Buzzard. Six. Uh, the fifth one is the pig. Is the do the do the pig man dance. <laughs> Uh, yes. Do you know the pig's name? Okay, so that's the Husky Harris gimmick. So I'm going to say it starts with an H, uh, I, but it wouldn't be Husky. So I'm going to say Husk, maybe? Uh, Huskus. Huskus. Huskus the it, pig. Huskus the pig. And finally, yeah. um, see, but it's either the fiend or another stuffed animal. <laughs> but I can't think if there was because there was no other Bray Wyatt gimmick. It was Sister Abigail gimmick, the Husky Harris gimmick, the the like the Wyatt family gimmick. Uh, so I'm gonna say the Fiend. Yes. 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 Okay. The okay. Well, so I, I couldn't quite remember if the Fiend is allowed in the, the house. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I'm counting him. I'm making. Is the, the house like the house that Bra- that Randy Orton burned? Is Randy Orton the cause of all this shit? Randy Orton is the reason why Kofi Kingston is champion, and Randy Orton is the reason why the hottest thing in WWE right now <laughs> is a bunch of fucking puppets. <laughs> He's in on everything. Yeah. Thanks, Randy Orton. Thank you. Okay. Next up, I got two more of these. Do you want two more? Yes. Okay. Hopefully I can break through. Yeah, you can think about it. Uh, next one. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Difficult. Okay. 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 Rug joke. Rug joke. <laughs> Rug joke. Carpet laugh. <laughs> uh, mm, rug joke. Yeah, we're 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 getting there. Rug joke. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, what's wrong with me today? It's okay. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe I didn't do these very <laughs> no, but well. I want, no, no, no. They've been fine after I've heard them. They've been good. I'm just trying to... Ta, ta. Just trying to... Ta, ta. Rug joke. Yeah, I feel... Current roster. Current roster. Current roster. Rug joke. NXT. Mm-hmm. NXT. <laughs> uh, fuck. I don't. That's you don't know. You don't know, bro. You don't know. Oh, <laughs> Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. I get it. Yeah. 
Very good. Very good. Matt Riddle. I'm, fucking, I'm a letdown. Rug, I'm a letdown this Rug week. joke, Matt Riddle. Matt, uh, Mike, you're never a letdown. You're never a letdown. Yes. <laughs> the, remember, remember, remember. See, well, we have to. We're, we're doing this trivia, but the folks at home, they're enjoying it just as much as we are. You know, th- these are questions yeah, they're also asking true. themselves. Very. You know, true. there could be, there could be, there. We we could have listeners out there who are getting every single thing fucking right every week, or we have people out there learning l- with us. Yeah, like, oh, like oh shit, like ah. what are the other lyrics to the, the fucking Firefly yeah. Funhouse? <laughs> there you go. Uh, you yeah. you have one the whole the whole song is like a minute and a half and they just repeat those two verses over. And yeah, over. I should download that on iTunes. Make that or I should make make that yeah. like my uh, my alarm clock in the morning. You know. <laughs> All right, my final question for you. Okay, let's go. In the Firefly Funhouse, there are six pictures hanging on the wall. Do you know who those victims are? All six of them. Uh, all six of the victims. Okay, so. Mick Foley. Yeah. Kurt Angle. Yeah. Kane. Yeah. And I'm missing, I have one more? Three more. Three more. Oh, Jesus Christ. I heard you entirely wrong. Uh, six. Six. Six total. Okay, who else is he fucking going over on? I guess, uh, well, on the wall, Seth Rollins' photo is on the wall. Yes. Does that count? Okay. Um, two more. I'm thinking it's a legend. And somebody else. I can't remember if if Five Five Funhouse was on SmackDown because if so, I would say Braun Strowman's face is on the wall. But it's not. <laughs> Judging by that reaction, um, he took he took out Finn Balor, so I'm going to say Finn Balor's face is on the wall. Yeah. And finally, last more. but not least, I'm going to say it's a legend, but I can't remember which legend he took out. He took out Mick Foley, Kurt Angle, and one more. Uh, it, the, did it happen on the Raw reunion? Did it happen? <sighs> Fuck. Fuck, this one's tough. This one's tough. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, oh shit! 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 Jerry! Jerry! The Jerry Lawler. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry yes. the King. Oh, uh, I knew. I knew it was one other fucking person. It was. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just before SummerSlam. Something like something that, like yeah. that. I he think was it, the one. He did the or he did yeah maybe right after he did the King's Court thing. He a couple saw times. the light shutting out. He's like, oh, I know what this means. I'm getting out. <laughs> and then he still got attacked. Jerry, Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler. Great. There you go. All right. Well done. And there you have it, folks. That's our trivia. Don't you have one more? You know what I do, but I have a I have a bunch more of these uh, <laughs> these. Okay, w- save them. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. Be better I've, next I've been time, writing hopefully. a little list of uh, wrestlers in other words. Now that you know how I play the yeah. game versus how you play the game, yeah. you know uh, we all play it yes. differently. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, all right, that's fair. That is fair. That is fair. And that was our trivia, folks. We hope you liked it. Uh, we're moving on though to uh, to the very last ever Tuesday night SmackDown yeah, Live. Yeah, this Q for, for now. Q Vitamin C's graduation. Because as we go on SmackDown, we remember all the times we had together. Remember, yeah, remember, D A J and Dean. Remember James yeah. Ellsworth. Remember Brian winning the title against AJ. Oh, Daniel AJ Br- winning the just title on, against Jinder. Just fucking just on just one week. It just happened one day. It just fucking yeah. happened. Uh, what else? Just so many, so many incredible memories. Uh, Memories. And that's about all I can remember. But <laughs> we're closing out for SmackDown's <laughs> last ever Tuesday. We're back at the Chase Center, I think. Well, I think we're still at the same place we were the night before. I think. Um, yeah, maybe this is, yeah, I don't know. Is this the last ever show there, ever, of any kind? No, no, no. That was, you're thinking or, the Oracle where they did play. Oh, yeah, that's right, been done right. this whole time. This is the new. Oh, yeah, this okay. is the new place, but uh, true. You know, we got to thank the Blue Brand for being a staple on our Tuesday nights ever since January seventh, two thousand sixteen. Uh, yep. So we got to thank it. So let's 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 go out on a bang. Let's go out uh, opening up the show with uh, Eric Rowan, our uh, the new hottest heel over there on the Blue Brand. Um, he comes out and says, you know, like. Fucking shit, you know, like I'm just here. <laughs> what does he say? Yeah. All his problems kind of feel the same, uh, but I like, get uh, what he's saying. 
Yeah, he says he's not an artist. He's a creator who creates violence. There we go. He had a Kill Switch Engage T-shirt on this week. He did. He I did. Know that. He's always pumping out. Uh, <laughs> he's always pumping out cool bands. Just got tees. Yeah, his whole his gear. Just must be like a hundred just band shirts with the sleeves cut off. Oh, it must be the easiest shit. You can just go to and like they go to Hot Topic and just buy. Yeah. Just stuff. pick it. All right, got my gear for the month. Great. <laughs> buy a new shirt All every right. night. It'll rip. Don't worry. Yeah. So Daniel Bryan comes out to interrupt him, and Bryan says, "You want some respect? Then fight me." So that's exactly what we get. Daniel Bryan versus Eric Rowan. A match right uh, off the bat. Yeah, it's always good to do. The crowd's super hot for Daniel Bryan, so I guess he's back to babyface now, pretty much. Uh, yeah, because now I think we're we're trying to take we're trying to get back at Eric Rowan now. Yeah, so Rowan dominates the match early on, but Brian fights back. He starts targeting the limbs, working on him, but Rowan hits his big power moves on Brian. Um, at one point, Brian gets the label lock in, but Rowan gets to the ropes, and then Luke Harper jumps up, distracting him, and uh, he hits a big suicide dive on Harper, but Harper just gets right back up, um, and then Rowan pulls Brian back in the ring, hits the Iron Claw. But it was kind of scary on the landing. Brian's foot got caught up in the rope and was all twisted and locked in there. Yeah, that was. Could have been bad. I thought that was pretty cool. It was scary, but it was. It was uh, cool, but yeah, it was and like then shit. I see, like the ref tried to get in there and like push it down. It, those things yeah, must think, be tight. Oh, because once it goes in, it's like, it's like a just like a vice. Like you have to because the way the ref Brian was the one that actually got himself out. The ref was kind of like twisting it when you're supposed to like roll with the momentum to fucking. That's how Mick Foley lost his ear. Was when one of those spots. Yeah, really? Oh, but, yeah, 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 I did yeah. hear about that. See, he was supposed to get his head stuck, and then he just, his ear went. But this was an accident. Uh, but Oh, yeah, yeah. well, Brian well got out. the ropes are meant to support, <laughs> like, hundreds and hundreds of pounds on them. Yeah, so just the way it so awkwardly they're fucking just got tight, twisted. and they're probably made of, like, fucking thick shit in there, too, right? Yeah. But, yeah, Dan Brian, like, pulls himself up, and then I think, like, the, yeah. the, 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 pressure, just kind, the, or... the pressure just kind of released from the, uh, from the ropes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, could have been could have been ugly, but it looked like he was okay. Um, eventually, Harper and Rowan they clear the announce table to put him through it, but then Rowan Reign comes down to make the save, and all four men fight for a bit. Brian hits the running knee on Harper. Rowan hits a spear on Rowan, uh, and then Rowan goes to help Brian up, but Brian just smacks his hand away. He still hasn't forgiven him for calling him a liar, I guess. But then he grabs a microphone and says, "All I want is a one-word answer. Do you want to see me and Roman Reigns kick their disrespected asses?" So mm-hmm. the crowd chance, yes. So there you go. So well, I guess that's the match. Hell in a cell. That's the match we're getting at Hell in a Cell. It's not a Hell in a yeah. Cell match, though, right? It's just kind of no. it's going to be it's going to be a standard tag. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, right. Yeah, both men, or, or um, yeah, both Brian and Roman Reigns were not on SummerSlam. So uh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess they're they're uh, they're in due of a show, you know. Yeah, I guess there was clash, but either way, that'll be fun. That should be a fun match. Crowd. Crowd will be super into Brian being fully babyface again. So, and it always helps. And by association, Roman it always Reigns will helps get some Roman Reigns to get cheered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah anything, rub, anything you can do to get Brian cheers. Rub. Yeah, the Brian, yeah. the, the the BR as they call it. Uh, we have another one of these backstage interviews uh, pre-taped with Kofi and Michael Cole coming up next. Again, I think it's I think it's fine. Like I think these work. Yeah, yeah. They're just talking about uh, Cole's like, why, Kofi? Why would you accept the challenge? Why? <laughs> like, why? You know, I promised the universe. Fighting champion, and that's another chapter of it. So, uh, yeah, um, and he does his little baby W. Yeah, baby W E. Um, it's, it, it, it is one of those things, though, right? Like it is, uh, of course, losing to Brock is a thing, but just having Brock I'm on the show is also just a thing. Yeah. So I mean, I'm ready for Kofi to drop the title. It is. I I thought I thought the last match. You know, I think we both kind of thought. Uh, he would lose it at Clash to ran, to the Rand Man. Yeah, but yeah, I think very, Kofi uh, Kofi and Brock will put on a great match uh, because Brock loves working with uh, smaller guys. Yeah, yeah, no, that'll be an awesome match, and uh, there's gonna be quick turnaround because two days later is the pay per view, so I don't know what the what the world what that match. Like if if Brock wins, does he defend the title there? Or does he just take the weekend off? Who knows? Right. So is the, there's no WWE title match at Hell in a Cell. Not announced. Not announced, but yeah. But they, yeah. they could do something and then immediately follow. I get it. Yeah. But, yeah. So, this it's kind of weird. There's like a 10-day break between SmackDowns, which doesn't happen normally. Which is weird. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. So, let's say in this hypothetical world, Brock does wrestle at Hell in a Cell. 
I wonder yeah. when the last time he wrestled three days apart were, or like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? What's the yeah, like, twice in the same? You know, week. like what's the shortest amount of time that he's wrestled between since to like yeah. two thousand three? <laughs> That's a good trivia. That's a good fact. trivia. Fuck! Don't take my question. All right. Don't take my question, Mike. We'll see. Uh, we'll see, we'll All see what right. happens in that program uh, coming yeah. up later. Coming up on that season premiere of SmackDown. We're real excited. Uh, Chad Gable comes out next, though. Yeah, he's here to cut another promo on King Corbin and uh, all his bad short jokes. And you know, he talks about their his run in the King of the Ring tournament, and their match last night. It was no joke, but he had Corbin beat, and he knows it. And then Mike Kanellis comes out to interrupt for some reason. Uh, well, no, I think because of the uh, the father, he was the wasn't a couple weeks ago Chad Gable like the father to Murray Canales's baby. No, that was Ricochet. Oh, okay. Then you're right. I mean, for I, some reason, Mike uh, Canales showed yeah, up. Yeah, he's just he says he's here to prove his pregnant wife that size doesn't does matter. And then, uh, yeah, Gable ends up squashing Canales with some suplexes in the ankle lock. So the ankle lock, and and then when he's yeah, when Gable's celebrating, Elias pops up on the Drumbletron and sings a little song. More short jokes, of course, but that was a good song. So I guess that's the next feud after Gable's done with Corbin, Elias. I don't know. Yeah, he's still a big deal. He's on both shows, right? So, I mean, yeah. uh, and I think he deserves it. Sure. It'll be fun to see where <laughs> he actually ends up uh, after um, this draft, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What's, it, what, what's uh, coming up next? Backstage. We see Charlotte come strutting in. She asks Truth where Carmella is because they're supposed to have a tag match. Uh, Charlotte congratulates Carmella on winning the 24-7 title, but tonight she needs to focus on the tag match against Bailey and Sasha, which happens to be right now, up next. So, um, of course, the 24-7 title rules are suspended during the course of another match. Naturally. We all know that. Naturally. Was, yes. Um, yeah, so Charlotte and Carmella versus Sasha and Bailey. Uh, I thought Carmella looked pretty good here, hanging with Three of the top women in the business there. Yes. Like she didn't look out of place. Um, yeah, it was a solid match. Eventually, Sasha reverses a pin attempt from Carmella into the bank statement for the submission win. Um, and then after the match, Truth grabs Carmella and runs off with her as the female horde comes running after the them. The female gaggle. Oh, my God. So do we have? <laughs> we have Dana Brooke. We have Sarah Logan. We have... Um, yeah. Who's that other one? This is where Kyrie Sane was there. Yeah. With the, so Kyrie Sane. With her telescope looking like a fool. We had, uh, yeah, Billy Kay. Who's the one uh, who's not Nia Jax but was... Tamina. Tamina. I think Tamina was yeah, there. she was there. It was great to yeah, see Tamina that Tamina uh, has a job still. Yeah. So... This uh, that they all come running through that leaves Charlotte all alone in the ring for Bailey and Sasha, but then the man Becky Lynch comes out to make the save. Uh, so that's and then they book a match for next week's SmackDown. Uh, Becky, and yeah, that's which is a big something. match. Which I is, feel like something. Which is also yeah. weird because the four horsemen. Yeah, it's like, or yeah, um, it, you know SmackDown. There's not going to be a there's the line in the sand, you know. But Becky's and Sasha are just cross or, you know what I'm saying. Well, they're get. I feel like they're getting everything out while they still can, because after next week or the two weeks, oh, no you more. think that no more Becky on Raw, no more. Oh, you think that's what it is? You think it's more of uh, there will be? Yeah, they're, well, think, they're saying uh, with a timeline. I think it's both. Like they want, they also just want to stack that first Friday SmackDown as much as they of can. Of course, but then it also is potentially yeah the last time you have Becky on SmackDown or um, Sasha and things like that. Until that fatal four way four horsewomen. Yeah. Until a month in Survivor Series when uh, when every brand has to fight each other. I wonder if they're allowed. Yeah, yeah, if that's like... I, I just... And Raw goes 6-0 and oh, like last year. Or no, it SmackDown's going to have to win this year. I hope How so. do they figure they that out? Oh, so many questions, Mike. I don't know. <laughs> ah, so many questions. Yeah. Let's move right along to some in-ring action. Mm. Ali versus Nakamura. With oh, Sami Zayn on the outside, of course. Uh, there's a little scary looking moment. Ali hit a suicide dive that was almost a literal suicide. He like landed. He landed almost, on his head. almost what? Like, like <laughs> folks, pick, like on his folks, neck, picture like, a head, picture a handstand, but yeah. you're without your hands. Yeah. Imagine you're diving into a pool, <laughs> but then the pool is a hard concrete floor, and you don't use your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't use your hands, oh. and you're just so much going just, head first. And but he 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 kind of uh. But, I guess he rolls away or yeah. does something. Yeah, he bounces something. right back up, so he's fine. He hits, uh, uh, yeah, he hits a big look, big super kick. He goes up to the top rope, but then Sami Zayn pulls Nakamura out of the way. So Ollie's had enough of that. Starts chasing Sami around, but then he runs back into the ring and eats a Kinsasha. 
uh, Kinsasha from Nakamura. So another win. Sammy, Sammy and Nakamura working together. Mustafa Ali always does this thing, which is great, whereas, like, you can throw him at, like, the outside of the ring post, and he bounces off of it, and always kind of yeah. spins as he lands. He's a good, uh, he's bump, a good, he's a good bump taker. <laughs> I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah even that, uh, right. even that dangerous fall, you know, um... Mustafa Ali probably deserves a shot at something, you know, maybe at least this uh, this belt. They've been, yeah, they've been, they've been kind of cock teasing him with this intercontinental title for a while. So I don't know. Eventually, well, he, eventually he's got to get that big win. Exactly. The belts, be, the belts on TV now. So maybe that's how you. Maybe that's how we bring it back, right? We can't just bring it back with title opportunities. We need to get it back on TV, and then be like, yeah. yo, remember Shinsuke's a little piece of shit, and then <laughs> uh, you know, let's 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 go towards something. Yeah. Very and, looking forward to it. Yeah. And now that there is going to be a hard brand split, you will be able to focus more on the title. Since it's only going to be like three on each show or whatever. Yeah. Instead of just like eight all the time. But. Dude, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I am excited. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's been a good. It's been a good little while. The, the, the competition is bringing up the best of everyone. And right? everyone. Which is, isn't that what Cody Rhodes wants? That's what he's been saying yes. this whole time. He just wants everybody exactly. to be doing something good. God damn it, Cody Rhodes. Uh, You're so great. He's dashing. Um, we get a quick tag match up next. Xavier Woods and Big E versus the B team. Uh, B team hit a couple moves, but then New Day hit them with the Midnight Hour, which I still consider the up, up, down, down. <laughs> but they get the win. And are they still the tag champs? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think so. Okay. I just you know wait. I'm. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just I think. Wait. I don't even. Know. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like I'm just. I'm. You know. I'm recalling the event, and yeah, I'm the... trying to remember if I saw t- <laughs> tag tag team belts. I mean, I already asked about the raw tag champ. So clearly, I don't know what's going on at all. I, yeah. The men's I, tag division I have is twenty four seven title change hands three times this weekend. I had no fucking clue what was happening. Yeah. Well, that, they didn't even mention that on TV. They even so mention I to, it. I had to do my you had digging. To go on Wikipedia to find it. Yeah. Uh, at least, uh, yeah, and B, B team's been squashed a little bit now. Uh, fucking, let's keep squashing teams instead of being jobbers, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the B team's role. This is, um, it's, it's in the name. Their t-shirt <laughs> is, like, sharpied on. <laughs> shit, yeah. Uh, then we head backstage to Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville walking around, and Mandy's got a bunch of copies, autographed copies of her Maxim magazine She's on the cover. Uh, featuring, she's on the cover. Mandy Rose herself. Yeah. Uh, so she's handing out some magazines to people, and Sonya's like, "Come on, are you serious? We got a match. <laughs> Get focused." And then they run into Otis, and he's like, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> and he just he wants to get a selfie with the pretty lady. So him and Mandy, the uh, him and Mandy get a nice selfie, and he takes one of the magazines. He's like, "Thank you." And he was, it's kind of funny. He was all like bashful and a bit timid around the pretty lady. I liked it. It's a funny. It's yeah. It's gonna be funny. Yeah, Otis. I mean, people love Otis. And Everybody Tucker walks up. loves Otis. <laughs> Tucker walks up. He's like, Otis, what are you doing, man? And then he peeks inside the magazine. He's like, My man. He pats him on the back, and they're both acting like it's a Playboy or something. Yeah, because it might. Be. It's like what you see on the cover is what you're gonna. see. I haven't opened it up. I I really don't know. Yeah. Um. But we do get a match. Fire and Desire taking on the Kabuki Warriors. Yeah, both both with those bad entrances. It's, I, I, I noticed it more. I noticed it this week for like the first time in a long time. They didn't time. even try. They don't it's even like 20 try. Twenty seconds switch. Twenty <laughs> seconds switch. And you switch. It's, it's just, just yeah, and the one because it's like because Kyrie Sane's music is so specific like, Yo, that like ho, ho. it sounds like a Final Fantasy theme. Yeah, and then just straight then into Oscar's like bow now down. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! We get the but ma- of course we get the match. No, no, but no, no. Before the match, the oh, uh, fire and desire during the entrance. Sonya was not giving the fuck me eyes because she was upset, frustrated with Mandy that she was. Because Mandy comes out, she still got some magazines with her. She's flaunting them around. So like every real relationship, there can be some tension, not just the sexual kind, but they still love each other. Um, they, I, I have to get this out of the way. So they they still do their pose, you know. They may be in a well, it's the they're, pose. They're, you have to do the pose. The lifting hug. So, um, And then when the match starts, Mandy goes over and hands her last autographed copy to Corey Graves. He starts going nuts. He, cream, he creams his pants. <laughs> he He's so happy. He's like, oh, my God. And it's autographed. 
He's not even talking um, about the match for half the match. He's just talking about the magazine. And when the camera yeah. would pan, and you could kind of see him in the background, he's still looking at the magazine. Like, he's 100. <laughs> Corey Graves is oh, 100% yeah. in character all the time. <laughs> he's just a horn nut between uh, Alexa Bliss, Mandy Rose, Carmella. Well, okay. um, <laughs> yeah. But then later in the match, Mandy grabs the magazine to shove in the face of Kyrie Sane. She's like, you'll never look like me. Because uh, you're not a white woman, I guess. Um, we're back to, we're back to this. Ki- she was doing it to Nikki Cross <laughs> last week. Yeah. So Mandy Rose is just single-handedly chopping down the entire women's division. Yeah, for their looks. For the, all because of their oh. looks. Not their in-ring abilities. Or not saying, like, yeah. yo, Nia Jax, you hurt a lot of people. She's not going <laughs> to try to, like, she's not actually airing her grievances with the women's division. She's just like, I'm a, I'm hot. You're yeah, not. I'm hot, you're not, so back up, ho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so she's flaunting that magazine, and then Kyrie goes to kick it, but she kicks a bunch of air. She just kind of completely yeah. misses it the first time. <laughs> Miss it the first time, <laughs> hits it the second time. I applaud yeah, her for hitting it. the second time, knocks it away. Yeah. Um, and then Kyrie does her plank, walks the plank, which I've been, I always love when she does that pirate march. Mm-hmm. She doesn't do it all the time. No. And then she hits the insane elbow on Mandy for the win. So uh, that's got to put the Kabuki Warriors in conversation for another tag title shot, I think. I think so. You know, it was, I think they, I think someone mentioned on commentary too. They're like, we, weren't they just in a title shot? <laughs> yeah, they were <laughs> like and then was, they lost. Yeah, so I think it was be some. But, uh, so after the match, Sonya looks sad and a little frustrated because of Mandy's the distractions, but she still loves her. So she helps her up and they leave together. So of course, you know, the bond of love can overcome these obstacles. Sure. That's what they That's that's why I'm so invested in the storyline. It's love. It's the most pure form, emotion in this world. Love. <laughs> it's not about lesbians. It's not about sex. It's not it's about. Lo- the it's always f- been about love, Cam. Yeah. Shoot me to. You're 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 being worked, dude. You're being <laughs> fucking worked. Or maybe I've been working you this You've whole time. You've been working me. Mm. Oh my god. Uh, no. No. This is real. This is real. This is Let's real. Get it. Okay. Not more. Not more real though. Our main event is coming up next. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is even more real than real. This is legal. This is shit. legal this shit. Is like- I also gotta love it when a main event doesn't involve wrestling. Gotta love that. Yes. <laughs> Kevin Owens. Um. Okay. Or, or rather, Shane, so Shane McMahon is coming out here with his his fucking legal team. And his I'm, legal team. And yeah. I'm looking at these people going like, do they look? fit enough to take a bump i'm just i'm, I'm kind of i'm looking around the <laughs> ring i know something's gonna happen i'm waiting like you know does this i know she's looked like an old woman but like maybe she could take a little bump i don't know maybe she if she's trained enough um and he, he he tried to like just like apologize to kevin owens be like yo drop this lawsuit we'll all be good this lawsuit's gonna cost you so much money in legal yeah, fees like, i can keep you in court forever so let's just you know let's just settle this uh let's let's just settle this right here and then um you know, it extends the handshake to Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens doesn't want it, right? I mean, it's the same shit. Yeah. And he, he he was saying it in promos, like, earlier or, like, you know, a bunch of months ago. And he says it, like, at one point here. He's like, Shane, you don't get it. Like, we don't want – like, nobody fucking yeah. wants you here. It's not about the money. It's like, you don't belong he's here like, in this locker room. He's we like, don't want nobody you. wants you. Like, nobody wants you wrestling. And nobody wants you on TV. Nobody wants you doing all this shit. I love it. Uh, you know, they're they're shooting. They're, they're shooting right now. Yeah. Yeah, so he says this lawsuit, All the only thing it's about is getting under your skin to gain leverage because what I want and what everyone wants is to see your ass get fired. See your ass so get Kevin fired. proposes. An ultimatum. Pro- the old, oh, the old gotta ultimatum, love an legal. ultimatum. A legal ultimatum, by the way. This has legal yes. ramifications. Yeah, so he, he wants to settle this with one final match. Uh, you win, I stay fired, and I drop the lawsuit. But if I win, you're gone from the WWE. So Shane says, what's the catch? So Owen says, well, let's not have a regular match. Let's have a ladder match. Those little documents your lawyers have, let's hang them above the ring and we'll settle this. Classic, so. classic uh, legal documents in a briefcase match. Above you know, ring, we yeah. had the, old, we had uh, you know, the uh, custody, custody battle. Custody. <laughs> <laughs> We've had, uh, we have had other things, the money in the bank documents. Um. <laughs> of course, you know, kendo stick on a pole. Uh, you can keep adding so shit good. to shit and eventually you yeah. end up with legal. We legal had a Judy Bagwell on a forklift match really? in WCW. Buff Bagwell's mother on a forklift. See, there you go. Buff Bagwell's mother on a forklift. Either way, you're going to end up We are to a legal documents match. Yeah. <laughs> legal doc. Uh, I don't think they officially, they didn't say it on the show, but I think this is also on the next SmackDown. So that's, they're really pushing that thing. Oh, I assume this was, uh, I assume this was Hell in a Cell. 
I, I from what I'm uh, been told oh, okay, by my shit. sources. Well, no, that that's a, that'd be a huge way to kick off SmackDown Live. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Brock Lesnar match so, and this thing. Yeah, a title match and a ladder match and some it, crazy and, shit. And and a legal documents uh, uh, in a briefcase <laughs> match. <laughs> Yeah. Can't say no. Um, but then right after, I guess they were close for time. They were they close to have one last for time. Segment. <laughs> At one point, Shane says, like, he's probably like, hurry this up, Kevin. <laughs> I, I can picture him being like, yeah. you're taking way too fucking long like, to do on. this. Because he, 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 Kevin Owens took a really weird way to announce the match. He's like, yeah. we will take those documents and we will hang them and we will. <laughs> it was him saying, like, ladder match, bitch. Also, when, yeah. when he says, uh, this was great in Kevin Owens' promo, when he says, if like if I win, you leave the WW. He didn't even say the E yet before the crowd was going nuts. <laughs> if you listen back, he didn't even finish the sentence, and they're just yeah. like, "Fuck yes, Woo. fuck yes, Kevin." Yeah. But they're crunched Get on time. And we still needed to fit in a backstage interview uh, with uh, the man Becky Lynch. Yeah, so just a quick little hey, Hell in a Cell match. How's that? And then Sasha comes running in from behind, attacks Becky. Quick little brawl from them. Um, and then Sasha smashes Becky against the cage that they had back there. And then officials come in and separate them. So Becky lays hurt to end the show. The Raw feud on SmackDown. You know what? I was pretty <laughs> I don't, impressed. I don't know why. This is... what yeah, it was a good little. I would No, I was going to say I was pretty impressed with their ability to do it so quickly. Time it. Yeah. Like backstage yeah, like Charlie like or backstage seconds. Kayla, whoever it was, just getting out these questions. Like da 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 and uh, boom, ba -boom, ba -boom, it, and was, uh, it was it was fantastic. And yeah, like you said, Becky Lynch uh, laid to waste, I guess, uh, before our season premiere um, coming up next week. So this is uh, Becky's got her hands full. Yeah, so should be good. Should be good. Should be good. Should be good. That's how we end the show. And folks, that was the last SmackDown on ever. On Tuesday, ever. <laughs> on Tuesday, Tuesday night. Yeah. That was our yeah. last SmackDown ever on Tuesdays, and it was a great show to conclude uh, what has been a great show forever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so uh, yeah, looking forward to that premiere of SmackDown. Uh, yeah, we'll figure out. We don't know. It's probably it's good. We'll have to figure out the timing of our show because if it's on a Friday, we might not be on our next. It might be on the following episode. Yeah. So we'll see. Folks, we're going we'll we'll, to we'll, we'll, we're gonna have to figure that one out. Uh, but of course, you know, the next time it pops up on your podcasting subscription service, you know, you, you know, we'll be chatting about something, even if maybe next week's episode doesn't have SmackDown and we just kind of do Raw and uh, and we do our own thing, yeah. right? That Raw could also and we do, uh, and the AEW. And, and AEW, and right? That could, preview, that could also, that could also happen. Oh, shit, Mike. Oh, my God. We can't do yeah. two. So, uh, yeah, even, even without SmackDown. Two shows a week, Mike? Is that what we're going to have to start doing? <laughs> Maybe. You do Monday. Maybe. You do Monday and Wednesday is is a show, and then no, but then like Friday, it'd be hard. It'd be hard. You'd almost need to do like a Saturday show, but I don't know. We'll forget. Yeah. Okay, okay, we'll figure. Well, we'll, we'll we figure. are open. We're open to suggestions to. too, folks. We yes. want to hear from you. Um, we want to hear from you before uh, that. That was it. That was it. We love SmackDown. We yeah. love like, even before that. Let me let me address real quick last night's NXT episode. Oh, Just two okay. Things. Yes, yes, yes. Worth what checking out. Uh, so, uh, Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic, I believe that's his name. Uh, once again, they had a, they had a great match last month and they had another outstanding match, uh, last night that, uh, that's worth checking out. Okay, great. Um, Keith Lee, man, this guy's 340 pounds, but he's doing like corkscrew planches. He's, so he's doing a, he does a fucking moonsault off the second rope. <laughs> the, the second, second rope. rope. That's three feet yeah. less. So, and then fucking Dijkovic hits a Canadian destroyer off the top. This match was nuts. Oh, so my God. What? Destroyers are going um, down? Shit, dude. I got to watch this. And I didn't, I didn't notice this during the thing, but Keith Lee hits his finisher called the Big Bang Catastrophe, <laughs> which the initials, BBC. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would check that match out if I was you. And then the other thing, the other big thing on this week was Matt Riddle versus Killian Dane in a street fight to determine the number one contender for the NXT championship. Okay, so this okay, was, um, okay, okay. Yeah, Riddle. So we had, you know, we had the chairs, the tables, the kendo sticks, the usual shit. Um, big Riddle hits a big knee into the chair face, chair into Killian Dane's face. So it was a headshot, but they're, they're allowed. They're allowed, I guess. Know, knee. It's a knee. Yeah. There's a, there's a there buffer zone. There's one really zone. funny moment. Yeah. There's this one funny moment where uh, Riddle, he Dane's on the ground. He's got a chair on his belly. Riddle's got the kendo stick. Then he just smashes the stick on the chair and he lets go. And, like, the kendo stick bounces off the ground, does a flip, 
lands perfectly on his shoulder and the rope. So, it, like, he caught it without trying to, and the crowd's like, oh, shit! And he just has this look like, bro! So then he just swings again. It was really funny. <laughs> bro! Uh, <laughs> it was just such a stoner moment, like, the way he, he it was like a bottle flip that wasn't playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, Matt Riddle, he locks in that Fujiwara armbar, and he taps Dane out. So it's official. Next week! Matt Riddle is challenging Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. Wow, so that show let's is go. they're stacked. Ah. Oh yeah, well I guess oh. um I guess because next week is AEW, right? Yeah. Oh, so my. you got Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle. You got Shayna Baszler versus Candice LeRae, and you also have a tag title match, Undisputed Era versus Street Profits. So three championship matches next week's NXT. Oh my god! And what are the matches? So they're they're really pushing. They're pushing. What matches do we have uh, for AEWs? You've got the women's title match, Riho versus Nyla Rose. You've got um, the Young Bucks and Cody versus Chris Jericho and two mystery partners, which has a lot of allure. Okay. You've got Pac versus Adam Page, uh, a couple other things. Pac? Yeah, they're, 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 that'll be Pac a great Page? show. Pac Page? Pac. Pac Page, I think. Pac? Yeah. Um, yeah, so both. That, that's going to be great. Um, I'm just trying. And apparently the first, both, uh, the first two episodes on NXT drew over a million viewers, which is good. For, really? Uh, yeah, like some analysts I thought were saying around 800,000, but uh, yeah, 1.1 million was, I think, was the number, so that's pretty good. It'll be Great. interesting to see how much of a share, like how much of a crossover between uh, AEW and NXT there is. Right, yeah. That's... Like if there's if there's 2 million total, or is it going to be 1.5 for each, or I don't know, It'll, we'll see. Yeah, you would think, right? I think I think another question would be, which one is uh, which one is easier to view later? Because I think if you're living, let's yeah. say if you're living in the states, where I think something like Turner is something you just like have on cable. You yeah, know? TNT, pretty much everyone has. And like USA, um, like people, like you have that, right? So I'd be curious to see, like, because if it's available, you know, it's available on Hulu Plus, I think in the states later. So it'd be like if you watch AEW live because you can watch, uh, you know, the other one on Hulu. Who really knows? Yeah. Uh, another match is going on Ooh. that night is uh, MJF and Brandon Cutler. Oh, Brandon Cutler can't get enough of MJ. Yeah. Brandon Cutler was uh, highlighted on this last week's um, road to AEW TV. Okay, I wonder how those will play out once the television starts. If they're just going to incorporate that into the weekly, I episodes. hope they do because they're very short. It's pretty cool, yeah. and it uh, it just provides you know a little bit of something, right? And keeps really the, yeah, the, keeps the stories rolling. Yeah, and the way the way they sort of book it is. You know, and they do a lot of exposés on the people who you've just seen in one of these fucking matches, but you have no idea who they are. Yeah. You know, uh, they had like, um, I mean, of course, they're promoting the AEW Women's Championship, but I think a couple weeks ago, Riho was like, they gave her like, it was like 15 minutes of interviews and shit and uh you're, you know maybe 10 minutes or whatever. And you're like, is she a good talk? Immediate, well, really... Immediately, you're on her side. Immediately, she I already like her just based on her her character. So she, her, she only her, speaks her in Japanese, right? So everything's subtitled, right? They su okay. Yeah, good, every, yeah. Oh, of course. No, they, they they just no 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 no. I mean, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, no, of course. So they put subtitles there, and she just she kicks off her little in, she kicks off her interview just saying, you know, I, I my entire life I'm you know everyone pushes me down because I'm little, and everyone thinks I'm gonna lose because I'm little, and I'm like 85 pounds, and then you're like, holy shit, girl, like. You're badass. <laughs> You're so <laughs> badass. I don't know. So she works twice hard, and it's great. You know, it's a real uh, David and Goliath on that uh, AEW thing. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, I guess, if next week's show might incorporate, would be the first week to incorporate um, AEW, potentially. Like yeah. The very next yeah, no, show that uh, we hear, I think, if we know nothing else. I think so. Okay. I think, yeah. Well, either way, it'll definitely be after. Yeah. Our next show will be after the debut, right? <sighs> That's a good point. I would imagine. That's a good point. Yeah, I would imagine also. Okay, Mike. Uh, we got. We, we'll plan all these logistics later off, Mike, because yeah, the, the folks we got at home really time. don't want to listen to this. But we have one thing the folks at home do want to listen to. It's something that we do every single week. It is our Wrestler of the Week. It's the Wrestler of the Week of the Week. The wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. The Wrestler of the Week of the Week. Mike, easy, Lacey Evans, Lacey Woo! motherfucking Evans. Thank you yeah. for 
all the messages I received from all the people <laughs> I, saying, did you see this? Who is this person? And then the couple people who were like, yo, is this fake? And then me telling them all they got worked. Like from the get go, I was like, "You're getting worked right now." And then I'm, "What does that mean?" And I'm like, oh, "Okay, it's kayfabe." I just, I'm so glad that Lacey Evans let me share what I love with so many of my friends. Well, I am so glad that you are sharing my love for Lacey Evans right now, <laughs> as I have been a prominent supporter of her since she's debuted. Um, and yeah, I, I think I've given her rest of the week before, but I'm very honored that you have given her that. That prestigious title this week. Um, but me, I'm going with the man I just talked about a few minutes ago, Keith Lee, for that match he had. Uh, he's just so damn good. He's so big, but he can fucking move around like nothing. So uh, damn big. good. Shit. No, you know what? I'm gonna have to. Ch- I'm gonna have to check out this match. Uh, now I've seen Keith Lee wrestle before, but yeah, I don't think it's I've, probably it should be. A- I don't think I've seen any of his NXT matches as of yet. So I'm gonna have to try that out. Yeah. No, he's good shit. Good shit. Good shit. <laughs> exactly. That's all the time we have this week, folks. Remember, you can rate, review, like, and subscribe to the podcast on all the places. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and yeah. YouTube. We're out there on YouTube. We're real excited for uh, all these format changes which are going to happen. I'm so stoked on AEW, us adding a little, uh, just a new twist to what we do here on the show. Because yeah. Um, cause, oh, yeah. Also, uh. What are you gonna, the Mox Man, he's going to be the on. The Mox Man is 1,000%. He's, he's not in a match, he's but 1, he's going to be there. He's 1,000% going to be there. You think, <laughs> yeah, think so. Mox Man's not going to show up? He's been working hard oh, this whole time. Right he's going to be so buff, <laughs> dude. <And> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, I'm looking forward to this AEW thing. Very much so. Okay, <laughs> oh, folks, yeah. that's all the time that we have. We hope you, uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week on the new season of the Shoot Brothers New podcast. season, baby. Okay, bye. Woo! Sweet.